Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is Monday, June 5th, and this episode is brought to you by my fantastic motorcycle sponsor, El Cajon Harley. El Cajon Harley, Southern California's super Harley dealer, located down in the San Diego area. You can also find them online at ElCajonHarley.com or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get yourself lined up with a new motorcycle this summer. Do not mess around. Like I said, today rent is due. Skip your rent and go straight into El Cajon Harley and put all your money down and buy a motorcycle and travel around America. Do it while you can before we're on the lockdown. Get out there and ride. Get your motor running. Go to El Cajon Harley. Hit up my boy Greg Riley. Find out about their fantastic uh, motor clothes department, their service department. They got all kinds of great things coming up. They got a ride to Petco Park. Uh, They've got amazing used bike selection. They also have right now bikes, bands, and babes in bikinis. Check that out. That is pretty rocking. And what you want to do is uh, go down there. And test ride something, you know? Try out the new motor, the Milwaukee 8. Get yourself on a motorcycle. These guys have been sponsoring the podcast for a year now, and that is pretty damn cool. They got a Father's Day special going. Check it out, $20 wallets. Father's Day special. Get in there. That goes from June 1st to June 18th. Regular price, $45 on that wallet, but $20 for you during the Father's Day special. Get in there and go get yourself a motorcycle. All right, let's get into the episode. It is Monday here, and I am in Denver, Colorado. If you're listening today and you live in Denver, I will be at the Comedy Works tonight. Comedy Works South, one night only. Come on down and check that out. Uh, Just blazed into town. I was in uh, Portland, Oregon all weekend at Helium. First time at that club. Shout out to that amazing place. Portland, Oregon and the Helium Club. Man, Helium is cool. Great audiences amazing uh, people that work at the club. It's just a home run, man. That's what the A clubs are about. When you're in an A club, it's just so much better. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't have to go use the bathroom in the audience. Oh, the sound's good. Oh, there's actually some uh, waters in the fridge. Just small things that, you know, other clubs just, you know, space on. Anyway, great weekend there. And uh, had a good time. Uh, yeah, it's something about Portland, man. You know? Good, I mean, I'll tell you what. Good thing it rains there. Because if it didn't... You know, Portland is basically what I said is the San Francisco in the woods. That's what it is. It's like San Francisco in the woods. It's got some cool people. Amazing food. Good coffee. Amazing fucking stores, man, for all that shit I'm a sucker for. I'm a sucker, man. If I walk into a store and it's got like it's got like a half tree split in half as a table with some kind of fucking oils that you can rub on your neck, smell good, and a and a handmade jacket and some kind of weird knife a dude fucking pounded out and You know, just these fucking man stores that are popping up everywhere. I just walk by and I'm like, ooh, I wonder what they got in here. And it's just exactly the same shit they got in every man store. They're like 7-Elevens, but I just drawn into them, you know. And they always have like a turntable in the back. I was just in uh, Danner Boots and they had a turntable in there. And it was just like instantly I was like, this place is cool. You know, and next thing you know, I'm trying on mountain climbing boots. <laughs> like I'm going to be climbing mountains in, uh, in Studio City. Unbelievable. But man, I'm just a sucker for that, that 
fucking well-made shit, man. Handmade stuff. I was, uh, I got turned on to uh, this guy. What is his name? I got to get his, his thing here. Ship John. You guys know this guy? Oh, man. Ship John. He, uh, check him out on Instagram. Anyway, he's up there and uh, makes amazing stuff. And then I hung out with uh, Chris, my old buddy Chris from West Co. Boots. He came to a show. We had some uh, doo-doo breakfast at some uh, late-night diner, which is nice. Just reminded me of old truck stop. <laughs> but uh, awesome. And what else did I do there? Uh, shit. Oh, I went by, uh, I went by Self Edge. Check that out. Some record stores. And I had, had a good time, man. Good time. They had some fucking lunatics up there doing some kind of uh, you know, bullshit rally. I'll mean, tell you what, the planet's getting crazy out there, man. It is getting brutal. It is getting fucking... I, I just, I don't get it, man. Anyway, you know, as 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 crazy as the planet gets, you're like... Man, I'm out there traveling around, fucking busting my ass. I should just fucking grow weed out in the middle of nowhere in Portland. Chill out with a couple French bulldogs and and wind it down, man. Fucking 51, I'm out there working my ass off and you're just kind of like, fuck. Anyway, Portland, Seattle, that whole area up there. I like Portland better than Seattle. It's just, uh, it's just more... Uh, like a real laid back vibe. Got to see my buddy Lance Tanner. Haven't seen him in a while. Back from my old Harley Davidson days when I worked at Harley. Would ride with my boy Lance Tanner every day. Got to see him. And uh, chill out, man. You know? But that area definitely has something about it. You get up there and, you know, of course it rains like fucking crazy, but it was sunny out, so it'll trick you like, this ain't too bad, I can live here. Then you get there and it's just a fucking, you know, black hole sun. As our man Chris Cornell, long live Cornell, as he would say, black hole sun, won't you come? Wash away the rain, man. But uh, it is beautiful there. And uh, there's something about that area that is create. You know, it has a, a creative energy, and that's why I could see why all that great music was, you know, was coming out of that area. My guest was part of that music. A little band called Alice in Chains, and a guy on today, what I who I I consider the nicest man in rock, Mr. Mike Inez is my guest today. Bass player, extraordinaire. Super, super nice guy, and uh, he played with Ozzy. He's played, uh, he played on Slash's Snake Pit. He played in Heart, and of course, a million years in Alice in Chains. And he stops by and gives me uh, an amazing conversation. And we kick back and talk about all kinds of great stuff, including uh, they're about to start a new record, which is fantastic, man. I hope you guys love this episode. Bef I, I, I did, man, and I'm glad you love that Sebastian episode. Uh, before I kick into it, I'll just give you some upcoming dates. Uh, first of all, shout out to my boy D. Crunch for donating to the podcast. He came down to the Portland Helium gig. So cool to meet people that listen to the podcast, and they, they say how much they love it, and it, you know, it helps them and shit. That's fucking awesome. Feels good, man. D Crunch came to Steve McDonald, my old buddy, rhythm guitar. Steve McDonald donated the podcast this weekend and got himself a Bruce Lee DVD box set from me. Uh, here's some up upcoming gigs. Bray Improv this week, man, with Joey Diaz. God, that's going to be sick. You can catch us there. Uh, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, Minnesota House of Comedy. I'll be headlining. June 14th through the 18th. That's coming up. Also, Boston, one night only, June 29th at Nick's Comedy Stop. July 14th and 15th, I'll be with Bill Burr in Grand Rapids. July 27, 28, Toronto, Queen Elizabeth Theater. Anyway, 
Get your asses to the shows, man, before I retire out in Portland and grow some chronic. I love that. I love like the art of weed growing. I'm not I'm not a big smoker, but I like it. I love the look of the plants, man. Just some old school cola buds. You into some cola buds? As my boy Polly Shore would say, cola buds, buddy. Anyway. Uh oh. Oh, one last thing. I saw Dead and Company uh, a couple nights ago. Holy shit. It was amazing, man. I uh, finally got to see the set list. Like, you know, I've seen them a couple times now. I went and saw uh, The Grateful Dead on the farewell shows. And then uh, I saw uh, last summer Dead and Company. And then I finally got to see some of the songs that I worship. Which, uh, let's see. First of all, I was supposed to go both nights and I could only go one night because I was at, uh, I was in, you know, uh, Portland. But I really wanted to see both nights and now I'm like, fuck, I didn't see both nights. But the night I went, man, it was, oh, oh, they had a fucking bomb scare. Did I talk about that? I can't even remember. Anyway, they had a bomb scare, man, on the second set. Let's see if they even mention it here on the set list. They don't. But they were playing He's Gone, and then all of a sudden, at the, uh, in the middle of it, like three guys come on stage and whisper. They're wearing like black suits. They whisper in the band guy's ears, and they just set their instruments down, and they fucking walk off stage, gone, leave the stage black. And I look up there, and there's no one up there anymore. No, no, no monitor guys, no roadies, no, uh, no hanger ons, nothing. And, and I'm, and I'm with this other guy from like fucking, uh, sitting next to me, which I, I had the most incredible seat. And I was like, Oh fuck, that's not good. You know? I mean, that's some scary shit now, you know? And you're like, fuck, what's going on? And then they roll on the, um, the bomb sniffing dogs, still not saying anything. Now, I can see this because I'm in the third row, third, fourth row there, but the people way in the back, they don't know what's going on. At first, I was like, fuck, did somebody die in the band? Like, you know, and I didn't see it. Like, did Mickey Hart just fall over? I didn't know what happened. And, you know, it it was kind of jive. They weren't saying anything, I guess, because they didn't want to have a full-blown panic. But people got scared and fucking just left. It was like a good 15 minutes, you know? People were like, oh, that's, something's wrong. I'm out of here. And they left these fucking incredible seats. Whole air sections were empty. And then Bob Weir comes out and he goes, well, I guess we're all clear, kind of. Said it like, you know, kind of like that, like kind of. And then they kick right back into He's Gone in the exact same spot and finish it out. And I, I was like, I got to tell you, for a minute, I was pretty fucking scared. I was like, what the fuck, man? Shit is, you know. But, you know, all I was thinking is like, well, if there's fucking some kind of attack or something and I'm at the dead and company, well, so be it, man. I'm not going to sit in my house. And you know, so be it. There it is. I got taken out at a great concert, living my life, you know. But they, here's the set list, man. They played Shakedown Street, which I fucking worship. And they also played Althena. And they played Cold Rain and Snow all in the first set, which are like three of my favorites. Then the second set, I know people are like always, you know, oh, I don't want to hear trucking, you know. I don't want to hear that. Uh, fuck that. Trucking's great. Trucking has probably saved them, you know, getting a song on the radio so they could keep, keep making records. But they open with Truck, and then he's gone, and then they go into the amazing Help is on the way, Slipknot Franklin's Tower, which I always wanted to fucking see that. And uh, finally got to see it. An amazing Stella Blue. Bob Weir crushing it on Stella Blue. Sugar Magnolia. Then closed with Ripple. So I was like, well, it's not going to get any better than that. And it was a tough call, but the second night at Hollywood Bowl, I was like, fuck, I don't know which night I would have rather seen, but they opened with Hell in the Bucket. Another hip hit that I love that people are, oh, Hell in the Bucket. Oh, man, I don't need Hell Fuck that. Hell in the Bucket, great. West L.A. Fade Away, Uncle John's Band, New Speedway Boogie, 
which is fucking one of my top five. And then U.S. Blues, Estimated Profit, second set. Uh, Dark Star, uh, Terrapin Station. I mean, fuck. These guys are killing it. I'm going to look at the set list here and let you guys get on the show. Love all you guys. Please leave a review and subscribe. And also, if you want to donate to the podcast, just hit me up, Ray at yahoo.com or go to patreon.com slash Ray. Candles are lit. Here we are, Mike Inez. All right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode today. What a fantastic guest. Introduce yourself, man. Hey, this is Mike Inez from Alice in Chains. Um, Thanks for having me, Brother Dean, my road brother. Yeah. <laughs> God, so great to have you over here, man. I mean, fucking, dude, you, first of all, you got to be the nicest guy in rock. Oh, you, thank you for noticing. Yeah. yeah that's, I, I feel it's important. If you knew my family, you'd understand. Yeah. yeah good, good Filipino folks. Wow. And you, you said you grew up right up the street from here. Yeah, I was born, well, I was born in San Fernando, about 10 minutes from here. And uh, so you're down here south of the boulevard. This is where all the rich people live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm except, from the ghetto. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We won't tell them. I, I feel like I'm hijacked. I've, I've snuck in. You know what I mean? I'm in this small apartment if I can, in the oh, middle of like mansions a block away. Oh, no worries. Isn't no, that weird? Is, it's beautiful. It, it is. It's uh, When I first moved here, I was kind of bored. I was like, because I'm so used to living in Hollywood. And I was like, God, this is, this is not me, man. I got to get out of here. And now I'm like, oh, this is where I live. Yeah, I've been here 14 months. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but I moved from here. I'm, I actually grew up in Pasadena. Oh, Pasadena. So, yeah, Van Halen country. Yeah. yeah. You, you, like- you and I are exactly the same age, 51. Huh. So we have probably the exact, uh, you know, same love of bands. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. The golden age. The yeah. golden age, right? From like Aerosmith on, you know? The only problem is we're two years too young to have seen Zeppelin. You know, and Skinner. Yeah, they imploded by then. Yeah, yeah, right? It's just like, damn it. But other than that, I saw them all. We got to see the movies, though, at midnight. I, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah the fucking, <laughs> oh, man, I used to go to that. Like, you know, go see uh, Song Remains the Same and sneak in beer and booze and watch that, you know, at midnight. Like, so I, like I when we graduate, 84? Yeah, 84. Yeah, so, I mean, that was a golden age of metal from, like, God, when Van Halen won was 78. Yep. Right? So just just imagine those through seventy eight through eighty four. You had all the cool albums, you know. Oh right? went moving pictures and ACDC, Back in Black, and Ozzy. Uh, 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 I don't for, know. Uh, yeah, yeah, Blizzard and Diary. Two. Yeah. And you had uh, Mob Rules, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. Heaven hit. and Hell, Mob I was Rules. Just yep. cranking, uh, Die Young in the car on the way over. Oh, and, how great uh, is that? Uh, that? I wish that would happen again. I don't know. Everybody keeps telling me heavy rock is dead, but everywhere I go in the world, I mean, we're playing in front of like you know. Thousands yeah. of people, hundred thousand yeah. people, sometimes you know. Yeah, it, it's so and funny people it, say that. It's not that. dead. It's, it's not just dead not being marketed. Yeah, know? that's all I said. Yeah. I, I've said it a million times on this show. It's exactly to when we first liked rock and roll in junior high. You're at the locker just talking about, hey man, have you heard this band or that band? It wasn't the whole school. Yeah, it blew up to that, but now it's just back to how it was, and that mm-hmm. it was always a great underground fucking thousands and thousands of people listening to it. It just wasn't all over, you know, it's, Target. It's creeping back on the radio, though, especially like Sirius and stuff. You can, that's where yeah. I heard the Sabbath record. I love I mean, Boneyard. Yeah, yeah. I love Boneyard. Man, Boneyard is like, I'm DJing. Well, they got the, uh, Be- the Beatle channel now. I love There's it. all kinds of stuff. Springsteen but- channel. Yeah, Pearl Jam. Yep, the stuff. Dead Channel, which yeah. I'm sure you don't listen to. I love the Dead Channel. Oh, I like the Dead. Yeah, my wife's a Deadhead, so oh, really? A lot. Yeah. Wow. She's Is always she... getting me to try to have sex to the Grateful Dead. I just can't. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't made that commitment yet. Wow, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Have sex to Grateful Dead. I love that. She's a, she's a Bon Jovi fan though. Wow. So she, she makes me wear the Bon Jovi mask. Wow. <laughs> Man, she's... And, you know, I got to wear the Richie mask, though, so it kind of fucking sucks. Oh, Richie's out. So... <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he is, man. That guy can play the shit out of the guitar. Uh, you know, dude, I feel like I've known you all my life but don't know you, you know what I mean? Because I've watched you my entire life uh, playing music. And, and to be out on tour with you last summer to do those two weeks opening for you guys. It was just fucking, to me, it, like 
you guys don't even know, but I'm in the back of the bus just going, I can't fucking believe this. I'm on tour with Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah, we, we don't invite many people like that. I, I know. know. We loved you, you know. We still love you. We'll <laughs> was, do it again. We'll yeah, it again. man, I hope I, so. I just wish we had better places to play. I think, yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the venues where like beat, like that, that uh, I think Jerry was on your podcast talking about that shitty Trump hotel. What is it, the right. Taj? Yeah, that closed. What a shithole. That, yeah. that closed two days after we were out of there. Oh, it was horrible. That was the thing because they had been on strike. What happened was they Trump, didn't have food or anything. Trump sold that years ago, you know. Oh, and okay. the people that bought it uh, were leasing his name like that meant something. You know what I mean? Like, well, let's keep his name up there. But it was on strike. I remember when we pulled up, there was all those strikers out front, you know. And the guy told me that what happened was the new owners had taken it over, and I guess they wanted to uh, put everybody on part-time so they didn't have to give them health care and all this shit. And so they fought it, and they fought it so long that the guy said, oh, we're closing. So here we are, you guys and myself, in this venue. And I remember specifically one of the funniest things that happened I was talking to the tour manager. What's his name? I love him. Chuck. Oh, which, yeah. by the way. Our, our resident uh, vampire looking guy. Which, what? by the way, take these. Those are his. Oh, okay. Oh, he gets them by the pound. You could keep these. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> these eyeglasses. Chuck gave me a suite, which was awesome. He's like, I'm cutting out of here. You can have my suite. Me and my buddy Steve Henry were in this two bedroom suite looking over that weird haunted amusement park. But anyway, uh, dude, I've seen people playing slots and smoking crack in that place. I was like, what the fuck kind of place is that? That is you know? crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like Jerry was saying, it's like, uh, this is how America's going to be if he becomes president. You know? Yeah. I, I hope not. Oh, God, man. I hope it was not. like a Scooby Doo yeah. hotel. Right. Remember? Because the yeah. guys were checking in like, there's blood on my bed. And they would go to another one. This bed's not even made oh, up. Yeah. Mine had no pillows. <laughs> uh, it's probably better yeah. who knows what's growing that was the worst hotel I think I ever stayed in you know it's funny though it's because early that was um, the other the other venues were fantastic uh, that one we was we did like Denver yeah and, we did uh, Denver which is the Paramount which is beautiful we did that cool place in Salt Lake City that was like it oh, almost right. looked like a movie set that tight big kind of right, club right. theater kind of thing with the balconies on the mall yeah right there in the mall yeah and then yeah. we did that one um, in Cincinnati or whatever it was an old theater that was killer the ones that were the old theaters with the seats were great for me be, right. Not great for you guys because they had the seats, but because they could sit down while I was on, you know? Yeah, it's all, it's all the same to us. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> After all these years, yeah, right? You just got to keep, uh, keep the bus in the tour bus, or keep the gas in the tour bus, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a fun fucking time, but, you know, to, like I said, for me to be out on that tour was crazy, uh, especially to... Uh, that must have been hard. It was you, it was you know? super hard. You yeah. you did you saw one of them, right? Was, oh yeah, I saw, I saw pretty much all of them. Yeah, yeah, it was really hard, you know, because it's like. But you know what? I when I got the call, hey, they want you to go out. I didn't even think twice about it. I was like, absolutely. And I was like, doesn't matter if it's great, horrible, or whatever. I'm going out on the road with Alice in Chains. That's all that fucking mattered to me. Yeah, you know I think I mean? we had who was it? Craig Gas came yep. out one time. Yeah, one time, and so yeah, we just wanted to try something different and. You know, we're sick of, uh, it's funny because like, like the agents and the, the people that don't live on the road like us, they always send us these bands like, oh, they're going to be great. And it's, it's always some like ulterior motive, like it's a new band that they're representing and they want to yeah. make some, they, they're trying to, it's, it's always some sort of political thing, you know. So our drummer, Sean, is the one who I was like, no, let's get, let's get some comedians. Let's, let's explore that. And then your name came up and then off we went. It was great. You know? Yeah, Sean was great. And, and Jerry was great. It was like, you know, uh, to, to sit there with Jerry, you know, I, I booked those guys years ago, you know, on their first run through, you know, with Mookie wow. Blaylock o opening, you know, wow, as heavy. a kid. Yeah. yeah. So it was really weird to, to full circle. Full circle, man. You know, uh, now let's let's talk about you because I I, I love I love your playing and uh, I love your attitude and your vibe and, and your whole life. You know, you've been pretty much in Alice in Chains other than Ozzy and all that, but you've done some other stuff, Black Label and stuff. Heart for five years. Heart yeah. for five years. Was yeah. Gilby in that era? He was. Yeah. I remember. I saw. I did you. one tour with Gilby. It was one tour, and uh, I think we did a live DVD with him. I'm not sure. Come uh, I saw you guys at the. Um, Greek, maybe. No, no, no. In San Jose at that winery. 
Oh, uh, cool. Way up that cro- that weird yeah, crooked yeah, yeah. hill it's you go. Uh, mountain wine. Mountain wine. Right? So, yeah, yeah, remember that? I played that with uh, Dwight Yoakam back in the day when I was playing Whoa, music. Heavy. But I went haunted and, place. They said it's haunted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that weird long creepy road to go up it. You know, on a bus, you're like, yeah. this is fucking squirrely. But yeah, I, we don't play those with Ellis. With with Hart though, we played them all. Like, I was in Hart from 2002 to 2000. Oh. Five or six, I think, you know, till we yeah. got the band back together, you know. That, so that was a good place for me to land after Lane passed, you know. It's like yeah. uh, my sisters from, from Heart. We were all Seattle folks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Honorary Seattle. And they said, hey, just come heal with us and we'll, we'll just jam and come do one tour. And it turned out to albums and like five years with them, you know. In fact, Nancy Wilson's playing out here tomorrow. So, Oh, really? Yeah, what are you doing tomorrow night? Uh, come with me. Yeah, we'll go. Oh, no, I'm flying to Portland tomorrow. Damn. Oh, no I, I've been nice. trying to get her on this show for a year now, you know, like because she's promoting her new thing. I really want to have her on, man. Oh, she's great. Yeah. yeah. She's got stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you know, I saw Hart, uh, Dan the Green, you know, uh, on that huge wow. record. They were headlining Day on the Green, man. Oh, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, you got to think about like, how fucking huge they were. But I got that one record over there, man. I put it on Dreamboat Annie. That oh, fucking record with like, you put that on and you cannot believe the vocal. Especially on vinyl. Oh, man. And that guitar player, Howard Lease. Yeah, Howard, Roger Fisher. All yeah. of them are great. Wow, know? man. What a, I mean, that's an it's underrated nice. band. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize how hard the bass lines were until I started, play, you know, having to dig in. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, <laughs> better keep my eye on the ball here. This is some good stuff, you know. Really? Is it complicated? Different. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. like uh, you mentioned Dream Boat Annie, like a song like Dream Boat Annie is different than playing like, you know, I Don't Know or Crazy Train with Ozzy yeah. or, you know, uh, like Black Label, more aggressive. You know, I'm, I'm used to that heavy stuff, you know. Right. And then with Heart, it was more like that delicate kind of, Finesse. Finesse, Elton Johnny kind of thing, you know? So I really had to learn to, like, live in that mindset, you know, while I was doing it. But that being said, like, when they fire up some Kick It Out or some Crazy on You oh, or yeah. any of that, I mean, they got Barracuda. They, those are some heavy songs, you know? So, And me and Gilby, we brought the rock on that, you know? So yeah. we got some, got, got to get the Marshalls and the Ampegs going on those, you know? And That's great. I know Gilby told out. me they were telling yeah. him to turn down every four minutes. They'd be like, yeah. you got to turn down. you got to turn He's like, I'm on one. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's, it's tough, you know, because he's coming from Guns N' Roses. So yeah. that's a whole different monster, too. And also, yeah. you just want to turn up when you're playing live, you know? Like, yeah. when you play Barracuda, man, yeah. that was like the first yeah. or second song I ever learned on guitar. You know, it's a hard one. Got to count to 10. That's a secret. Anne can sing the shit out of songs, man. Uh, she's like the best vocalist I think I ever played with. Like Lane, it was probably my favorite, and yeah. he, and he was just like a work of art. And Lane, Lane's his voice was you, you can't go to school to get that. Yeah, and it, it was wild. He never warmed up. He just like would get up there, and it would just come out of his throat that way. You know, he was. I so couldn't believe real his and, voice, right? Yeah, like on the unplugged album, especially you could hear like on down in a hole, you could hear those vocal cords really working and just so poignant and heavy and you know great but every all those guys like chris and eddie all of them look up to ann she was she's the elder stateswoman up in seattle you know she's by far the the the, the best sing technical vocalist she can do opera freddie mercury kind of stuff you know oh when you see her yeah. sing stairway to heaven at that kennedy honors yeah. and you see robert plant crying yeah. You know, he's up there like, God, man, she is murdering yeah. this tune, yeah, man. He's crying because he can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's <laughs> yeah. like damn, man. <laughs> How do you still do that? And, and then Ozzy was Ozzy. He was great. You know, yeah. he's not the technical vocalist. Kind right. Of guy. You know, he's just fucking Ozzy, the, 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 the godfather of all of us, you know, the, or, or everybody's uh, rock and roll grandfather, you know. Now, when yeah. you go in and audition for Ozzy, this is years ago, you play on the No More Tears uh, era. Um, there's like like a shitload of guys going in. They all want that gig, and you're playing just in a local band, right? Yeah. And, and how do you yeah. get the recommendation to uh, to audition for that? Does somebody turn you onto it, like a Mike yeah, Varney or something? Um, no, I've been re- rehearsing over at uh, well, even my high school bands. I've been over at Mates since 1984. Wow. So it came from Bobby at Mates. Wow. Who's still? I'm so uh, 
loyal to mates. You know, there's there's love that place. There's bigger, better rehearsal places, but there's nothing like the clubhouse of mates. You know, what I mean, I can't believe there's not a know. documentary on that place. There should be. Absolutely. Yeah, we keep talking, talking, trying to talk him into it, but he's uh, real private. I mean, he he had said, it was like Bowie and like Guns. Guns always goes there still. You that know? was Guns' spot, man. Yeah, I mean, and there's hundreds of bands, and uh, I was in there. Got getting some bases out to put on the truck to Seattle for the record, and uh, just the other day, Incubus was in there and Ministry. So wow. I mean, people are still going to mates. Oh yeah, team. yeah. But I was in this this band and and um, Skin on Skin. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it, we we were called that for a minute, but then some other band said, "Hey, we're Skin on Skin." <laughs> so we I, we couldn't use that name. So yeah, that lasted about a gig, but it was during that time, probably 1989. Yeah. And then, um, so I was over there, and Bobby's uh, uh, brother-in-law, his name is Jeff, and Jeff played bass. And I, he, I just happened to run into him in the hallway, and he said, hey, I tried out with Ozzy. Ozzy's doing, uh, doing uh, uh, around the corner at Joe's Garage, Frank Zappa's place. Wow, yeah. I've so, been there. Yeah, it's killer. Yeah, right? it's great. And I think it's gone now, unfortunately. All the cool spots are kind of going away. I know. But... Um, yeah, so I was, I was in there with my band, and, and so I said, oh, I'll go jam with Ozzy, do Crazy Train. You know, just go play one song with Ozzy just to say, hey, I jam with Ozzy one yeah, time. Yeah. So I, I go down, I can't find the place, and I had this warehouse job. I worked as a, 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 like a shipper guy at, at this record warehouse. Uh, one stop, they called it. All the labels would bring their records and, you know, come in these big skids, and we'd break up the Bruce Springsteen live album and then send it off to, like, all the Tower Records yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know. And then, uh, so I was doing that and I was late for work and I just got like a, a promotion to be a sh- one of the shipping managers. And, uh, so it was my new job and I'm, and I'm I, I called in sick because, uh, you know, I was going to go jam with Ozzy. So I went over there and I walk in Joe's garage and there's like literally two, I think it was 212 guys tried out or something wow. like that. Wow. Yeah. But I walk in and there's dudes that are older than me because I was like 23 at the time, 22 or something, 23. And there's all these guys wearing leather pants, and they had the, like the five thousand dollar bases, yeah. and fringe coats, and all these guys are like, you know, not yeah. just a ki- kid, you know. And uh, so I'm, I walked in. I had a pair of Nikes on, ripped up Le- Levi's, and an L.A. Kings hockey jersey. <laughs> and, and I wasn't even nervous. I'm like, I'm never gonna get this fucking gig. So I'm, yeah. I'm not even nervous, you know. So while they're um, trying out other guys i noticed they're not just playing crazy train but they're playing i don't know at the same time and i kind of knew them all yeah and then i uh, bark at the moon some other songs i'm like oh shit you can hear it in there yeah because i'm I'm and is ozzy in there yeah ozzy randy castillo uh zach zach wild mark candelario who's uh keyboards uh, no, Mark Candelario was our uh, stage manager. His his older brother, Kit Candelario, was the stage manager for the Grateful Dead for all those years. Oh, yeah, wow. from the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. And his little brother, Mark, worked for Ozzy. And uh, now Mark is off doing, uh, he's stage managing Tool. So, oh, awesome. Yeah, he's, he's Maynard's guy now, you know? Yeah. But so he was in the room and Sharon, and that was it. So while the guys are in there jamming, I'm like, well, fuck, maybe I should like learn Bark at the Moon and stuff while I'm sitting here. Oh, you know? fuck. Yeah, pre so, pre uh, cell phone with a quick YouTube yeah, and all that. Yeah, none of that. How are you doing that? Like you just yeah. you just going over it in yeah, your head. So I'm going over it, and all these other guys are nervous, and you know, and and they're all being dicks to each other. You oh know? yeah, it's of like, course. Oh, yeah. Shark <laughs> it's like, tank. Yeah, it's a shark like tank. Yeah. And, and, and throwing <laughs> stuff in like that ain't how it goes. Just to fuck with your mind. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, but but I didn't give a shit because I'm never getting this gig. Yeah, I'm never getting this gig. Yeah. So I don't give a shit. I'm just yeah. going to jam with Ozzy and staying there as long as I'll have me. You know, and then uh, yeah, so so Mark Mark Candelaria comes out and he points me, hey, you get you're in. Yeah. So I, I cruise in and uh, so Zach's in there and uh, Zach's all right. What do you want to play? And I'm like, uh, let's play. I don't know. Or no, I said that uh, crazy train. Yeah. He's all cool, no problem. And then he goes into I don't know and starts laughing. I'm like, oh, it's like that motherfucker. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking with me right out of the Does Ozzy say anything to you, or is, is Zach kind of running the audition? No, I, it was all a family thing. Yeah, That's yeah, one I thing about, it. especially it's back. It's crazy. Like they're yeah. that big, and they're doing like yeah. a cattle call. Yeah, but it was it was cool because like back when I was in the band. Like, they didn't have the TV money they got from the show and all right, that right, stuff. Yeah, so, okay. so when we'd go to, like, Woodstock, New York, we'd hole up there and we'd write and jam. But we'd all kind of live in the same houses. And, wow. Um, 
That's you know, cool, old school, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, there was something to that. I'm not sure it's that way anymore. Of course, you know? so you but, you you yeah. go into I don't know. Yeah, so we play, and I'm like, okay, that was cool. And then uh, you know, Ozzy's all, let's play another one. So then I think we played like uh, Crazy Train and Bark at the Moon. So we learned those three, and I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm late for work. I got a bail. So I'm going to my truck, and then uh, I'm loading my truck up with all my shit and then uh sharon and ozzy come running out and like oh hey we thought we lost you you know we want you to come back tomorrow is that cool whoa. like whoa heavy okay yeah i'm in <laughs> wow they said yeah we narrowed in it. front of those other all those dick babies no players? no they came they came running out to the street oh wow yeah and then i said okay cool yeah no problem and i said what songs they said okay learn some of these and then they gave me some of the, some new riffs and say here try some of this stuff right? some new shit on a tape yeah, on a CD. Wow. Yeah. And it was stuff that never made an album. There were like B-sides on some stuff, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I said, here, learn some stuff. So I said, okay, cool. So I, overnight, I'm, I'm, I'm just grinding. I can't sleep, you know. And then, uh, yeah, so I, I went in the next day, and they narrowed it down to like five guys, down to three guys. And then it was a guy from New York City, and then one of Zach's old guys that he used to jam with in New Jersey, yeah. and then me. And then so the final day, they said, today's the day we're going to pick one of you guys. So uh, one dude goes in, the guy from New York City, and kills it. Yeah. He's sounding so good. And I'm like, wow, he killed it. He came out, and I'm giving him a hug like, dude, you, you killed it. That was awesome. You yeah. Know? So then I was second. So I go in, and I jam with them about a half an hour. I came out. And then me and the first dude from New York were sitting there in Joe's garage, right? And uh, yeah, it's crazy. And then like, uh, so the other guy goes in from New Jersey, Zach's guy. And then uh, he's in there, and he jams about five songs. And then they're talking to him for like 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, no. And then me and the other guy were like, oh, it's done. Dude, yeah. He's got it. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Right? So then uh, uh, Randy Castillo, the drummer, comes out and says, hey, you guys go home, and we're going to give you guys a call, and we're going to let you know who's got it. So me and the other guy are like, oh, uh, we, yeah, we yeah, didn't just soft it. touching yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, soft touch. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, okay, cool. So I was out here in the valley, and uh, I st so I, I swung by my grandpa's house, and he was 80 82 years old, 84 years old, riddled with prostate cancer, just wow. like went through his whole body. Right. You know? So he's basically on his deathbed, you know. And uh, so I went there, and then uh, the the phone rings, and it's uh, and it's Sharon, right, over at my grandpa's house, because I gave him that number. I said, well, I'm going over to my grandpa's first. Oh, yeah. And then you can give me a call. And then uh, so sure enough, and I'm, I'm like, okay, here's here's the call. They're going to fuck me off. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, no problem. So I'm with my grandpa. And it's just me and him. And then uh, Sharon's all, well, congratulations, Michael. You got the gig. And it no. was like one of the best memories of me and my old old grandpa. Yeah. And he was riddled with cancer and his, his, his uh, pajamas were jumping up and down. It was, it was killer That's memory. That's fucking yeah, killer. Killer memory. Wow, yeah, One man. of my greatest moments in life was that one moment, you know. So Once you get in really solid, do you ever ask like Zach, like, what happened to the other two guys? How did I get it? Like there had to be like these things like, nope. You know what I mean? Did you ever find out? Yeah, they were just saying they liked the vibe, you know? Yeah, it was yeah. A good, good vibe, and I fit in with everybody, and the playing was good, you know? And right. I still got that one Fender bass I had that I tried out. You know, it doesn't sound as good as all the, new, all the other 50 yeah. I got now, yeah. you know? But I, I, I refuse to, like, get rid of that bass. I still got it. Oh, yeah, that's now. the lucky bass. Yeah, it's over at Mates right now, actually, in the lockup. But Now, so... Um, once you get this gig... But, but then I got the gig, yeah. right? So then it's like, okay, we start rehearsal tomorrow, so come on in. And uh, so I showed up and... You quit your job? Uh, not you, quite yet, you know, because... And then this, this was on like a Monday, so Tuesday I rehearsed with them. And then Wednesday I had a gig uh, with my old band... And then at the Coconut Teaser, it yeah. used to be there yeah, on yeah. Like Highland. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. Is it Highland or Laurel Canyon right it's there? It's Highland and Laurel. I mean, uh, yeah, Highland and Laurel yeah. right there. That was the last club gig I played with my old band. Wow. And it was a Wednesday, and there was like 10 people there. Yeah. And then I told them, like, hey, I'm, I, I got the Aussie gig, and we're splitting. Like, this weekend, I'm out of here, so I got to quit the band, you know? Yeah. So the one guitar player guy was like, you can't do that because uh, you, with Aussie, you're just going to be a, a, a paid guy, you know? Uh, with this, you own a piece of this. And I'm looking around this club. I'm like, dude, <laughs> Ten people. I'm fucking out of here, dude. Yeah. So, uh, so, <laughs> hey, yeah. you own a piece of this yeah, exactly. misery. Yeah. <laughs> you got to share this fucking yeah. grim Hollywood <laughs> death the strip. The years. strip is dead. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, it's done. Yeah, so we, we flipped to Dublin, Ireland. I didn't have a passport, so Sharon's like arranging these like emergency passports. Yeah. I'm going down to the thing. All this shit was going on. and um, So I... Uh, I uh, 
yeah, I hopped on a, a British Air Flight 747, my first big plane. Yeah. And, uh, so we go over to Dublin, Ireland, and we get off the plane, all of us. We, we always traveled as a band, too. It was wow. really cool, like a family, you know? And wow. We hold up at the uh, Thompson Twins house um, in Dublin. They had this uh, rehearsal kind of house. They had a big barn, and yeah. we, we lived there. And then, uh, yeah, so we did two shows at this old punk club called McGonagall's. It isn't there anymore. There's a big plaque in, on, in, uh, right on the main street there in Dublin where Phil Lennett. Um, yeah. Grafton Street, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we did two... Two nights at the Grafton, and then uh, went to London, and then uh, played the Marquee Club, and then that's gone now. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that was a that was a cool place. It was great. And then from there to um, it, there were all warm up shows for Wembley. We did the arena, Wembley Arena. So that was my first like. <laughs> Fuck. Yes, yeah, so I showed up, and then that's when all the lights and the crew guys have already been working on this for like a month, right? Yeah. I don't know anything about it, so I show up, and they had these like big big guys like. Like uh, being like they're, they're dolls, but they're crucified up like th- four or five of crucified guys up yeah. on the thing with laser beams shooting out of their eyes. Oh and, man, just straight stage, super stage. Yeah, big one, you know. Wow. And so uh, the guys coming up to me are like, "Here's your pyro cues, you know. When when uh, uh, like at the end of I don't know, there's going to be a big explosion, so you're going to be standing on one of the red X's. So you put red X's around so you can know. Wow. Okay, during this time, this is crazy yeah, shit. So I'm like, wait, we're just like five people. days yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't. No, no. By this time, we we we've yeah, been rehearsing. But for whatever, a while, you know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like don't get yeah. blown up and shit yeah. here. <laughs> you're just brand new in. He was the same guy that blew up Hetfield, I think. Wow. Yeah, same dude. Oh my I think god. His name is John something. Oh yeah, my him. god, I can't believe he's still working. Yeah. He made Hetfield on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Fuck. Those so it was cool. So we did that, and then uh, back to the states. Long Beach Arena was the next one after that, and then bam, we were just off and running. So yeah. now, what's going on at that time? Geezer Butler was in the band, and he yeah. says he's retiring because he can't take the road anymore. And then he does another hundred years after. So it oh, had to yeah. be something uh, real, you know. Here's the thing with guys like us, and I had this talk with Jerry. Yeah. We're totally unqualified to do anything else at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. What am I going to do at 51 years old yeah. if I, you know, if I wasn't, you know, playing playing music and being a musician? Yeah, I had a guy on here who played music do. all his life, then he had yeah. to work at a guitar store. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just who was that? A, a dude, a dude from Warrant. You know, he's working right. at a guitar store during, the, you know, when it went all down. Yeah. You just got to keep on keep on doing it. I've been really lucky to flip from that and uh, then Alice in Chains. We had. All these bands opening up for us, and then right when the Dirt record came out, uh, for about six months we had Alice in Chains out. Yeah, and then so I got to be great friends with them. I saw that yeah. tour, you know. Oh, uh, awesome. All, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I think it was Oakland Coliseum. Right, or, or, right, right, right. Or it was either there or Cal Palace, one of the two. But yeah, it was Alice in Chains, Ozzy. Might have been Cal Palace. We played them both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you yeah. know, so you know when you're out. With all, first of all, when you're out with all these, that's the No More Tears record, right? Right. Yeah. Um, did they have that record already recorded? Pretty much, yeah. I came in right at that tail end and wrote No More Tears with the guys. And wow. I think that kind of helped me get that, you know. Oh, wow. So I'll, I'll let, it, I shouldn't speak out of school. That's a story for Ozzy to tell you. I don't get into the middle of what happened between Daisley and, uh, oh, yeah. Or, or, or Geezer. Yeah, of course. Guys, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. You know? I get it. I'm just that's, saying, that's you know. A, that's a story for Ozzy to tell all that of, stuff. Of course, you know. I think there's still litigation going on with that. And I heard, uh, her dude was still. And up to this in 2017 still battling over that record fucking suing Ozzy still and I don't, I don't really know much about the case or anything but it just seems like when did that, those records come out so and, and god what a great bass player though Bob was and Geezer so I mean yeah. I got good because of those guys I had to like okay I gotta learn you know I gotta learn Children of the Grave like that yeah and I gotta learn uh, you know, goodbye to romance like that. Yeah. There's no, like, you can't go off of, you can't just start jamming your own thing on no. something like goodbye to romance or, or especially the Sabbath stuff, you know. It's wild to but, think how... And, and um, Zach ripped up. He was a ripper. Oh, uh, He was on fire Oh, the then. No More yeah. Tears thing, too, was just such a fucking crazy saga tune, you know, because yeah. you're coming out of, like, you know, you've got the amazing first two records. Unbelievable. Right. And then it gets a little circusy on Ultimate Sin and Bark at the Moon, you yeah. know. It's a little it's a little it, the tunes are great, but it's a strange era for Ozzy. Yeah. And then he comes I thought Jake was good too. He was great, yeah. but I'm saying he, that he never really Ozzy never really talked about Jake much when I was in the band. He was great, yeah, man. Yeah, Jake asked me one time he's at a NAM show, he's like, Hey, does Ozzy talk shit about me or whatever? I said, No, to be honest, I swear to you, bro, I'm not shitting you. Yeah. 
I, I never heard him say the words Jakey Lee come out of his mouth the whole time. I, I, I think that bummed him out even more. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I no, think I he know. had to be mourning Randy Rhodes for the whole time of Jakey Lee. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that. It's like, how are you going to? I mean, Jakey was incredible. You know, uh, I saw the first gig at the S Festival with him. and I, uh, I was there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I uh, that oh, changed an- my life that gig. Oh, yeah. another guy. Yeah. Here you are. You're the yeah. third guy who's been here in the last two weeks. That, it, yeah, there was like 300,000 people. There. Changed <laughs> my life too, man. I've been yeah. talking about this nonstop because it was yesterday, two days ago was the anniversary right, of it. Memorial you know? Day weekend. But you know when yeah, you I think, took acid that day. I you was did? Like, yeah, when I, was in I took school. mushrooms. Yeah, I was there baking away, watching Ozzy going. I want to do that for a living. And then what? Fast forward seven years, I'm on a plane going to Dublin with the guy. You know, it's amazing the wow. way it all kind of worked out. You know, that is that's <laughs> a great story. Like I want to do that, and then you're fucking playing Wembley Arena with him. You know? Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty fun stuff. You know? But yeah, you know, Ozzy. This is like 1990 or something that we I started with Ozzy. So. That and guy when was it? Eighty three was. Uh, Eighty three. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Eighty three. Twenty dollars. Wow. I, I just posted yeah. up the ticket stub. I, I got it upstairs. That's sweet. I, I posted up every year. I posted on Instagram. Another it was year. Weird. The acid I took too had the US Festival logo on it. It yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, totally. Was, was it good so acid? Uh, yeah, it worked for me. God, I was God, it was so hot out that day. Scorpions and uh, Van Halen. Van Halen. Judas I Priest. Van, I was kind of bummed at Van Halen. Though. Van Halen sucked. Yeah, they they had a bad set. They I were terrible. Hoping, yeah, because that's like our our hometown guys. Yeah. And, you know, they, they took they, it lightly, I think. They were like, this yeah. is a big party in the desert. And but those you had other, the Canadians are there. The right? Triumph. Yeah, you had Triumph, and you had the uh, English guys. You had the Germans. Yep. You know, Motley and Crue. And then, the, new, the, the new LA band that's going to take yeah, the throne, Quiet you know Riot. what I mean? And Quiet Riot. But then you had... Uh, yeah, then you had Van Halen. Like I was like, okay, yeah. they're gonna show them what's up. Yeah, and then they came out and just didn't didn't do the the magic Van Halen. Roth set. was tanked. I, yeah. Was that what it was? He was just yeah. tanked. Yeah, you know, uh, everybody has their favorite band that day, but to me, it was definitely Priest. Oh, me too. You know, yeah. they stole it. Ooh, yeah. Everybody's like, no, Scorpion stole it, you know, which I love about, that's what I love about fucking old school rock. We're all going to be in the same room and we're going to be like, no way, dude. Halford (laughs) with the chrome, the chrome vest. Amazing. KK Downing playing the center on that red V, you know. And and, (laughs) nice, you know your shit. Oh, God, I just love that shit, man. What a special day. Oh, it it really was. It changed all our lives. It changed the fucking landscape, too, of, of... as we talk about how big rock and roll got, that was the first day where people were like, I think industry and, and money people they were like, holy they shit, it, yeah. there's an audience out there. There's 300,000 people out there in the goddamn yeah. desert on acid. Yeah, I didn't go to the other days. That I did. You, you, oh, did you go yeah. see Bowie? And, yeah, I went all three. You too? Did you see the U2 I stuff? saw U2. Oh, I saw sweet. Missing Persons. I saw The wow. Clash. I saw fucking uh, Stray Cats. Clash, I saw wow. Wall of Voodoo. Mexican Radio. Yeah, yeah. I was there the whole weekend. Boingo, I think, played, right? Boingo, Boingo. Wow. Uh, fucking uh, In Excess. Dude, wow. I mean, I, I can only afford the Stevie one ticket. Stevie Nicks. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Bowie. Thin White Duke. Let's Dance Era. You know, dude, screaming for vengeance. That was right in that. Come song. on, what was that like 84? 83, yeah, yeah, 83, there. 84. Yeah. You know, screaming for vengeance. Uh, you got another thing coming, you know. But see, why isn't Priest the one of these bands like Iron Maiden could go headline stadiums, right? Yeah, I think Priest should be one of those bands. I mean, they're just like, I think Priest me, is, they were just so yeah, they, they had so many great records. You know what I mean? And they, uh, they never really faltered, you know. And, and and I think what what it is with Maiden was you've got They're metal you got metal fans, but you also got kind of that sorcery wizard fucking fans, you know, like comic yeah. book fan that kind of thing with the Eddie and yeah, yeah. and all those lyrics and and you know Maiden I think was really wise back in the day where they would go where places other bands didn't go you know they were going to like Brazil early on and and all that shit before there was infrastructure yeah they were going all over the place and that's how you get these worldwide global fans you know yeah some of our biggest our our biggest shows are always Metallica and we go out with the Metallica guys we just did the stadium run with guns yeah and uh uh, but we've done some giant, like we've done Download with Iron Maiden. And, wow. 
it's amazing when you see a hundred thousand people singing the guitar solos and stuff like that to the maiden songs it's like in, just the feeling of that is so heavy those guys must have a great time every night you know incredible man now you 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 got a good run with ozzy and then of course um the bass slot opens in alice in chains is it a do they just call you and it's yours or do you audition no, I, I was at home. Uh, I was going out with this girl uh, named Lisa, and, and uh, she was finally happy. She was kind of uh, pissed that I was always gone. Yeah. But she's finally happy she got me home, right? So the phone rings. It's Sean Kinney. And they said, hey, will you? Uh, uh, Mike wants to go home. Uh, will you fill in? We need you to uh, go down to the airport and get all these shots, like these immunization shots. Yeah. And then learn these, like, 15 songs. And then meet us down in Brazil, and we're gonna do uh, Rock and Rio with Nirvana, Chili Peppers, Alice in Chains, and so I'm wow. like, sweet, yeah, yeah, no problem. So Hell I went yeah. down, got all these shots, like I was glowing in the dark from all these vaccination yeah. shots, like, like yeah. you know, some 20 straight shots. soldier <laughs> shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, uh, so I got all ready. I'm learning the songs, and my girlfriend's wigging out, like, if you leave. It's over. Uh, that was it. That yeah. was pretty much the end of it, right? Yeah, there, yeah, you know? yeah. You're like, hey, and, see you later. Yeah, I said, well, Alice in Chains at the time is fucking yeah. unbelievably massive. As well, far, not yet. Not, not but yet. I'm saying, yeah. that, as that far was as just like, when Dirt came out. But the underground yeah. version, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I'm not saying massive like Stereo, but I'm yeah. saying, like, you could feel the, Something going the, on. the thing was about to change. Man in the Box was on nonstop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they got that amazing um, live at the, uh, more theater with the love hate love that thing you know that yeah, still that, one of my favorite songs to play fuck, so that but that that classic Lane things out yeah, yeah right oh he gets to sing that one and everyone's talking about it they're talking about Soundgarden and they're talking about Alice in Chains you know what I mean yeah so, and, and Ozzy put them on the big so they started getting used to playing bigger places yeah. on the Ozzy tour so yeah I was like all right so cool so I was like a, about a day before uh they called me back and said, hey, Mike wants to do the one last show because they were in Hawaii at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I said, Mike wants to do the one last show. I'm like, oh, you motherfuckers, I'm fucking full of like radiator fluid from all these shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, no problem. So they said, go, uh, go. That sucks. Yeah, I was like, you're like you got a, you're walking science experiment yeah. at home. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all uh, I'm all yeah. tuned up for this. I uh, never had a cold since, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but so I said, oh, okay, no problem, you know, no worries. And then uh, so they said, meet us in London, and we'll do like three rehearsals, and then you could, we'll do the Europe tour and see how it feels, you know. So I mean, by this point, we're really good friends. Yeah, we just yeah. did six months with Ozzy, you know. Right. So uh, we went to this place called John Henry's in London. And uh, we walked in, and they're, they're pretty fried from traveling all over in jet lag, you know? Yeah. And I was there a day or two ahead of time. And uh, so we, we went in the John Henry place, and then the first day, uh, they were just really burnt out. So all we did was smoke hash. We just kind of, you know, got, a, got, got tones up in the amps, and we really didn't work very hard that first day. You yeah, know, we yeah. just kind of smoked weed and went and ate some Thai food and went back to the hotel. And then, so I had two days, two rehearsals, and then here's my trial by fire. We did, um, I, including the Jules Holland show and this other TV show, so it was 27 gigs Whoa. in 32 days in 16 countries. Whoa. Yeah, and that was, uh, like, we'd be at the first gig in London, I remember, you know, Lane would go, this is a song called Junkhead. And, oh. and then i kick him in the shins. I'm like, hey, which one's Junkhead? And, oh. <laughs> and Lane would, the fucking guy. And then he'd, like, he da 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 I was like, I got it, go. And I'd point at Sean. Whoa, Sean really? And off and, yeah, so I, <laughs> I, like, I knew all the songs. I just didn't know them. Yeah, you know, yeah, which songs of course. Were what oh, yeah, yeah. Point, you know, but once I knew all the riffs, I knew them. And then, uh, yeah, so we did that tour. It was us and uh, Screaming Trees. Oh, Screaming so, Tree, Mark Lanigan. Yeah, so it was Lanigan, Sick. Barrett Martin. Yeah, it was great. Oh, great. my God. Yeah, so we, we were just... Uh, That's some dark singing out there between yeah, Lane and, and him. And they were, like, best friends. Yeah. You know, so they, they hung out a lot, you of know. Of course, Mad Season, one of the and best we things ever. we were just, like, you know... 24 years old and just going for it and it was awesome you know oh all, my god we're all single and just out of our out of control <laughs> it's yeah. so fun you know yeah yeah and then uh it morphed into after that we came back and they said here come up to seattle and we'll we'll write some songs and uh so me and me and the guys wrote um a little bitter that was one of yep. my, my riffs oh yeah that i brought into it none of oh, my the riffs. sap ep 
Uh, no, this was uh, uh, Last Action Hero. Oh, wow, Arnold I Schwartz forgot and, about yeah. that. Yeah. And then the other song, which we made a single out of, was called What the Hell Have I? Oh, yeah. So and then the, the label was behind us. They put up some money for a video and all this stuff. So we did that. And then uh, we we did like a shitty cities tour, they called it, around the, you know, like Salem, Oregon and stuff like that. Shitty you know? cities tour. Yes, and this sir. is why Dirt's out? Uh, yeah, this is what Dirt was going. Right. So, so then, then we started doing all the videos for like uh, Down in a Hole video yeah. and, you know, because the machine kept rolling, you know. Right. And then, uh, so yeah, then we did Lollapalooza, I think, 90. I was there, 93. 93, 93. I was there. I, I tell the story, yeah. man. I remember Shoreline. The sun ah. was just going down. Dust bowl was dusty that night. I remember, yeah. and it was the sun was just dropping, and you guys opened with um, Rooster, and the video was on the backdrop like thing, you know. Mm. And I was like, "Oh, this is fucking insane, man!" It's sweet. I mean, that gig was insane. You know, like and, and those the the friendships that we had on that tour still remain. It was like Tool, Rage Against the Machine, Primus. Um, God, who am I forgetting? Babes in Toyland. Uh, what a tour, right? Yeah, there was, there, there was just some, some great... Tool had band, that like, EP Junior. out at the time. Yeah, Tool, I just knew. I used to watch Danny Carey play drums and go, wow, that dude can fucking play the drums. I was just like, you know, Tool was great, but the Tool's drummer was like one of my focal points on that whole yeah. tour. Oh, Fishbone, Fishbone was on it. Killer. The best band on the bill. I, yeah. thought, I thought they wiped the floor with all of us every night. I thought... Me and Les Claypool would be on the side of the stage. Les would look over at me and go, that's the baddest band in the land right there. And wow. they're so talented and yeah. multi-instruments and just great vocals. Sick, and man. Yeah, punk rock, you know. Yeah. Uh, just great, you know. And then from there, I went to uh, Jar of Flies. And then, so, but at what point do they say you're in the band after like a a, 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 a run, a, a couple runs like you're in? I, I don't even remember the moment. It was yeah. just like, I don't know. We are just like, it was nonstop. So, yeah, yeah. You know. Jar of Flies. Yeah. Wait, isn't Sap before Jar of Flies? Yeah, Sap yeah, yeah. came out before Dirt. Yeah, that's yeah, right. And then Dirt uh, yeah. came out, and then I jumped on right after the Dirt album came out. Then Last Action Hero. That Sap Jar one is the only EP ever to go number one. Isn't that crazy? No, Jar of Flies. Or uh, Jar of Flies was. Oh, Jar yeah. of Flies. Wow. So yeah, we so we had like, like I think it was. I think we wrote, recorded, and mixed that album in like. 10 or 12 days or something ridiculous yeah Fuck. we just had some time off in between tours and we went up to london bridge a magical studio up in seattle did you move to seattle mm. once you joined the band i had an apartment up there yeah so i i didn't buy a house and and live up there and at that point like there wasn't you know everybody was still like struggling and yeah. we were just toy touring musicians we weren't right. like no money know. yeah well all the money was just going back and right you know, we're just keeping it rolling and trying to be smart with it all you know and, uh, yeah, so then it morphed into the dog record, you know. That and, fucking record. Let's talk a little yeah. bit about that record because uh, what's that, guys? Toby Wright. Right. He I did Jar Flies with us. Yeah. Like I remember uh, he was doing a Four Non Blondes record that didn't come out after their, after their hit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, over off Sunset Boulevard. And... And I was, and I, Linda Perry said, "Hey, stop by. We're working on the new record." And Toby Wright was in there, and uh, he played some of the dog, three-legged dog record. And I was like, "Whoa, man!" Mm. It's it's interesting to think about. I think that this record, the three dog record. Uh, of course, Dirt is the masterpiece. That's what I think too. Just yeah, the group magical time that got yeah. captured in a bottle. You know, totally. But the three that, that and Jar of Flies. I thought Jar of Flies had some good stuff. I Absolutely. Stay away. Uh, Rotten Apple, Nutshell. Yeah. I think Nutshell, I will say this, is it's the heaviest Alice in Chains song. That's Lane putting everything in yeah. to one thing and and really calling a shot. You know. But the three legged dog record to me is fucking amazing. It's so dark and crazy man in those videos at the time where lane's kind of dressed like rob halford in that one video with the, oh, oh, with oh the, and again again yeah, they put us in this this yeah and that <laughs> this, cage like, thing yeah it was like a plexiglass it was here in la we did that video at the old herald examiner building wow and it was like old and nothing was in there and they they built this box and put us in this box and and they bolted sean's drums down they they swung us around and, it, it was sick yeah it was but he great. looked like like, out of nowhere, I was like, whoa. Like, that's what I loved about Lane. 
every like year awesome. he had a totally yeah. different look. Like on the you know man in the box, he's got kind of dreads, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Then the next one is my favorite Lane look, where it's like the Spin magazine cover with the slick back hair and that like the wood video. Oh yeah, you yeah, know yeah. I love that look. You know like, the longer coat. Yeah, the, 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 the black car leather. coat. It was kind yeah. of drugstore cowboy. Right, you right. know what I mean? <laughs> he kind of looked like that, and I was like, God, that's a fucking look. I remember. Uh, he's such like, a badass. Yeah, man. he was oh, right. He was great. And then on this fucking three-legged dog record he's rob halford i'm like whoa what this is cool like somebody from this grunge seattle anti-rock thing was like full he, he was wearing out a cut no it was like a rubber suit or yeah, something like a rubber yeah, suit. yeah yeah because we were on the way there and he saw the pleasure chest oh yeah yeah on, he's on, yeah, he's on hey pull over real quick so we pulled over the van on the way there yeah. and he went out and got like a bunch of stuff and then he ended up like wearing the rubber suit he bought at that place oh. on the video it was, and he looked just like such a badass he looked he looked like rob halford he had that hat on with the shades, you know, and I was like, "Whoa, this is fucking great." <laughs> yeah, but he, I, I think that he was reckon- like that though. He would, he he was like, wasn't like he was trying to like. I, I got to keep it fresh, and yeah, keep, yeah. He, it was just like he he'd get bored and just do something else, you know. Man, you know, it wasn't like he was planning it out. He was just like he'd get bored and just shave his head, yeah, or do or do whatever, you know. And that, like Lollapalooza, he wore suits every day. That was awesome. Yeah, just like 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 fine, like good threads. You Full know? blown. Just, yeah, it was awesome. to see that. Yeah, the suit. We're all scumbags, you know. <laughs> he was fucking up. He was fucking us up as a front man, though, because we'd be like, oh, you know, you're looking for influence and, keep and stuff. Be like, yeah. wait a minute, we're going suits this year. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, man. and then he's like, we're going suits. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's what you think. that's. How oh, I, I guess thought. we're doing the suit thing now. <laughs> that's how I looked at it. You know what I mean? It's like oh, he was. Like, fucking you know he was the guy man it's it's funny because when you look at the front men out of seattle there's some of my all-time favorite which is incredible uh you know andrew wood you know when i think of him i go fuck that guy rock star Oh, yeah, rock star, yeah. and 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 totally like, hey, fuck you if you don't like rock stars. You think it's cheesy or whatever. Yeah. You're yeah, out of your mind. It. This is how I live. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then and then you got Cornell who changed the game for me with the shorts yeah. and the fucking Doc Martens. But, but his writing was his so writing. like sophisticated and just badass. It was and, crazy. Yeah, and then Kurt, of course, has changed the world. Yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah. Eddie came up and. Eddie, and then Eddie was really kind of the guy like, oh, well, you just wear your street clothes. You know what I mean? That yeah. that brown Levi cord thing he wore for like five fucking years and some jeans and Doc Martens, you know what I mean? Or whatever. That's And around that time, everything was just like blowing up. Yeah. It's like, holy shit, what's going on around here, you know? Yeah, that had was, to be crazy, right? To be into that fucking, that machine. They, they were of, so like cool, those bands are like, Soundgarden was a band in 84, I think, or yeah. something like that. So, I mean, nobody knew Seattle was off the map. Everybody was like, L.A., glam, yeah. that whole thing, and that's where they were putting the money. And then uh, when that happened up there, those bands have been playing gigs and like kind of learning their sound. That's why like that scene was different. Like Soundgarden sounded different than Pearl Jam, sounded different than Alice. Sounded, totally. You know, it's from Screaming Trees or Mud Honey. Any of those bands, they all like were unique in their own way, and I think it's because they got to be a band. Down in L.A., everybody's like, okay, well, we need a singer with blonde hair and wear yeah. spandex or whatever. Here, oh, I know a guy, throw him in there, and here, we'll give you a record deal, minimal amount of money, do shit record, put him on the road, you know? That's true. So. That's true. And also, no one was taking chances until really that GNR record, you know? Yeah, I had some- GNR, the, I, I look at those guys as their own universe i mean totally still them and jane's day. addiction they were jane's like, too yeah they jane's. were like fuck all this other shit we don't yeah. have anything to do with that you right. know uh even- guns kind of touched on it and they embraced it and but still i mean it comes down to are you a badass band or are you not a badass band? yeah and those two bands delivered for sure i mean we were just on the gun stadium tour last summer and they're playing as good now as I've ever seen. I've done, I want to slash his records, right? Yeah, yeah, sl- and, Snake Pit. Yeah, and uh, so I, I, know, I know what like they're capable of, right? And we've done a lot of shows with the other Guns N' Roses that Axel had out too, yeah. you know? But something about Duff and, and Slash and Axel up there, it just like brought everybody's game to a new level. And Fortis is just kicking ass. Yep. Frank the Drummer's amazing, and Dizzy's been there forever. So, I mean, they were... Uh, when when they first got it back together, they played at the Troubadour here. Yeah. Did and you go? Then, 
I didn't go to that show. And I went then, to T-Mobile like a couple nights later. Yeah, we would, Alice was opening up on those shows. Oh yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah those those two nights. Those are the first uh, first shows, and uh, I just remember w- watching them that first night. Going, okay, they're all right. They're gonna they're gonna really do some. They, they're playing good for the right reasons, you know. Yeah. And, and so. They're still doing. I hope that tour goes five years for the guys. They should just keep doing it, keep yep. doing it. I'd love to hear another record, and you know, I would love, to, I would love for them. I don't, I don't say that about many bands. Yeah. Like I want to hear another record from them. I do want to hear another record, but I definitely want them to change the set list, man. You know, oh, like huh. I think that bands and and you were and, talking about they never play my Michelle. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And then one night, I, I like I went the first night when you guys opened T-Mobile, and then the next night they played Maya Michelle. Sebastian was there. I was like, "Fuck!" And then mm. down the road they played it like again one time. I was like, "How do you not play the darkest tune on the record?" You know. Yeah. But I do, I do think that you know, I think that's the only thing. That's what I'm starting to love about you know, and I and learned that from uh, early on from Black Crow shows is, and and now that I love the Dead is I love, it's different every fucking night. And, and I don't like that excuse of like, well, we've got uh, pyro cues and all that. I right. get that. But uh, in between those key tunes, rotate a bunch of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand. We, it's, we try. Yeah. We try. It's, um, yeah. It's, uh, that, that's like some of the sources of our like, most intense like band like arguments like yeah. oh, i want to play sick man or i want to play uh god smack or this yeah, or that. Yeah. and other guys are, oh, i want to play it's having but it's a blessing we realize having too many songs to fill 90 minutes yep but the challenge for you guys what to make it fun and non-robotic is like here's three we're doing tonight from last night that we didn't do you know and you're like yeah. oh fuck man i'm, oh, I'm we're, we're doing that on the tour yeah you, you got on. you guys were mm-hmm. i'm saying i'm just saying bands you know what i mean mm-hmm. like uh these bands that just go out there i know what you guys are doing i was watching it, it was great but i bet you too it's bigger than that like they have to do that yeah they have to do with yeah. the video stuff and, yeah i um, get it maybe roger waters did those kind yeah of course roger waters you can't fucking you can't very on uh those are like serious like uh, you, you can't go out of order on the wall yeah yeah you those know, are kind of, productions yeah. <laughs> and stuff but i'm saying like a gnr band once a week just shake up the set list different mm-hmm. opener different uh encore and different middle that's gonna make it feel because people are going two three nights i saw that tour already five times wow you know this last what do you one. think you think they're coming out and they're swinging I oh they're, man they're banging i tell you i, I love s- seeing a good band I oh yeah i don't care if it's a jazz band or guns and roses they're, fucking- they're tight and well rehearsed and on the same page it's like it's unstoppable by the time i saw them, first of all and i've seen uh gnr every tour with the other guys every tour i saw every one of them never missed it and Axel sounded better than ever, man. And Slash is murdering the guitar, man. He is just killer. Uh, yeah, I love jamming with him. He he plays with a lot of boogie. Yeah, you know, he's got a he's got a he's greasy, got that bounce. Yeah. That bounce. Da, 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 yeah. da, da, da. That's his. But his whole solos flavor. even are like yeah, like we're we're playing with like Zach Wild was just a burner face melter. Like Zach's probably like solo wise is like he's a he's he's a force of nature. Oh, he's, he's incredible. He's, Saw him he, last week. Yeah, playing Sabbath songs. Yeah, in yeah. Columbus, Ohio. I was nice. doing a uh, comedy. I just spoke to him this morning. Yeah, Fuck, coming up from Atlanta. N- another <laughs> another guy I'm trying to get on the show. But that fucking guy, dude. Oh, we'll make that happen for sure. Yeah? He, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'd love you. Oh, yeah. yeah well, he knows me. Oh, he's a good dude. Uh, like, like yeah, dude. yeah. I, 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 uh, I, I toured with his, uh, his Leonard Skinhead. I booked this little mini tour back in the day before wow. Pride and Glory. And uh, I saw him uh, Sunday for one minute on stage. He goes, hey, what's going on, brother? You know, I hadn't talked to him in like 25 years or whatever. And they put the guitar on and went and murdered. But fuck, that guy can play the shit out of the guitar, man. You know what I mean? And and, and Cantrell, like, I just got, I'm blessed with guitar player. I'm only as good as like, you know, Anna Nancy Wilson or, you know what I mean? Being a bass player, yeah, you know, you could be a great bass player. But if your drummer's having a bad night or your guitar player's having a bad night, it kind of like, you know. Right. Doesn't make or break. It's like when the when the money, like Anna and Nancy, are having a bad night, then the gig isn't good. Not that they've ever had a bad night. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, they're really pro. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Jerry. I've just been blessed. By Jerry's unbelievable. With some good guys. Oh, Jerry's. Uh, the weird thing yeah, about him is when amazing. he fucking puts Next that level. guitar on, you go like I'm blindfolded. I go, oh, that's Jerry Cantrell. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and fucking 
you know, the singing, the guitar writing, and the tone. Full package. And, and, yeah. and the fucking, and the way he goes for it on stage. Yeah. Like, I mean, I saw great. many of the shows back in the day. Many. And I was always yeah. like. You make a good X team. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Now, when you're doing that, the three-legged dog uh, record, I mean, of course, this is the, towards the end of the band and you guys don't even really play, uh, you know, you know, tour or whatever, but. When you're tracking that record, because that's really the first full-length record you play on, mm -hmm. are you just floored how fucking dark and evil that record is, man? Yeah. The thing, thing about Alice is, like, it's always been honest. Like, what you see is what you get. Yeah. You know, even now to this day, you know? I mean, um, we kind of, like, wear our hearts on our sleeves, and we're, you know, us, we're, we're, we're pretty transparent dudes, you know? Yep. And, um... So, yeah, I thought that was a good representation where it, even the album cover was like, you know, black and white. I love it. You know, but it was like kind of like we, we were pretty fried, man. By the, I mean, we were doing all kinds of shit. And it was like, you know. Um, were you getting yeah. in on that? Were you partying? Y yeah, I was, I was doing different kind of stuff, though, yeah. you know. Yeah, I never oh, yeah. Um, dove, dove, dove as deep and as, as uh, in weird and some of, some of the... You know, yeah, not only our band, but other people in the whole the circle. Scene. Yeah. yeah, so I never really got into uh, all that stuff. I really like. Uh, I remember being in Seattle and just it was raining a lot, and and I just uh, I wish that process went a little faster. To be honest, you know, yeah, like that that dog record, but we got it done, and I, I stand it. by it. Yeah. Oh, no, dude, I Lane, love it. Lane, it was great, and I think it's my the, favorite. Yeah, and the the vibe. Yeah, it's it's for, for for me too. Looking back on it, just uh, I think it's one of my favorites too. That you know that jar flies unplugged record into that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Now, when you go to do the unplugged, you guys had taken some long time off. We right. did some Kiss shows. Yeah, and, Kiss. Um, I remember you opened on the on the reunion tour, Ti Tiger Stadium. I think it was right, yeah, right, they, and they some Van Halen too, right. Uh, no, we didn't do any Van no, Halen. No, Van Halen, just a kiss. Yeah, Van Halen was before they jumped on with Ozzy. Oh, I got you. Right oh, oh, it was way back then. I thought they mm -hmm. were on that. Uh, but yeah, the kiss, but not very many shows. Yeah, I think we did like a couple few anyways. We did some after that. And uh, yeah, so we didn't, we didn't really tour much on, during those times. <laughs> yeah. It was, it did it feel like it was coming to an end? No, we never ever said, even when we all went home, and uh, we never, ever said, like, uh, the bands broke up. I mean, that's, that, I think, is the story of Alice in Chains right there. It's like, man, we are fucking bros, and I will stand by those guys shoulder to shoulder, and I'll look at whatever the fuck. Bring it, you know? Yeah. And so that's one thing I just love about, you know, the brotherhood of me and Sean and Jerry choosing, like, in 2005, like, fuck it man these are our songs let's get a dude and we'll just play a couple of shows and see what see what happens you know and here we are 10 years later with william crazy right and yeah it's still uh, william's you know, great but, but we we committed to this you know what i mean it is our life you know i mean we really committed to each other and we cho we choose to be with each other and when we show up at a building to jam you know it's uh still really exciting to me that and and it, and it means the world that we want to still do that together you know as a as brothers as a team yeah you know we were here this last weekend you know we've been through deaths together it's insane we've been through births together we've been through uh you know just just so much you can't even it's just all the front yeah. men are gone from seattle except for eddie yeah and he's from san diego <laughs> yeah i know right chicago right chicago san diego yeah. seattle but yeah i get what you mean it's so heavy those guys are like Maybe that's why the tunes were so fucking good is because oh, they were honest with it all. Real shit, I mean? man. Read the yeah. lyrics right there. You can't make that Any shit up. And, you you know? know? Yeah, who knows what could have happened if like Nirvana could have kept it together. But then there probably wouldn't have been a Foo Fighters. You know what I mean? Yeah, or them yeah. Crooked Vultures, which I love. Oh, yeah, yeah right. I, I saw them at the Roxy. One of those. God, when yeah. they first came out. They ah, like, you bastard. I wish yeah. I would have seen that show. Yeah, wow, I didn't even know they played there. It's oh, tight. man. It's so great, dude. John Paul Jones, man. The monster. Just the big, big uh, Zeppelin guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All my stuff was English. It was like, uh, you know, uh, my, my favorite bass player is D. Murray from the Elton John band, the early Elton oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 
I love that guy sung like a bird and, and just real melodic bass lines, you know, and uh, Elton, when he played on our Black Is Way to Blue album, I, I, I spent the whole time, I probably got on his nerves just asking, what about D? What did D, th what was his approach on this song? You know, <laughs> on, on, the, on the jazzy version you guys did on uh, uh, the BBC uh, in 1970. Two, yeah. You know, uh, wait, what amp was D using? He's like, I don't fucking know. Man. Like you know, I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm like you. I'm a gearhead. I want to know all this stuff. Hell and yeah. He passed away from cancer, so I can't ask him. But I'm friends with Davy Johnstone too, so I, I hit him up, and he said that uh, that guy D Murray would would always just you would never get two of the same takes out of the guy. Oh wow. So you just keep playing, and then then he would like dial it in, grab and it, something you dig. Yeah, I just like that he jammed and floated. He didn't. It's like Grateful Dead thing. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they, what the Dead said when they when yeah. were doing the first record. And the producers like, okay, let's do that one again, same way. They're like, what do you mean, same way? <laughs> yeah, They've never done <laughs> that, that ever. Moment passed. Like, I hope you got it on tape, motherfucker. Yeah, and they were like, recording is not for us at all, <laughs> right yeah. there. there. They're not supposed to be that band, though, you know. But I, then it was all like, like all. Um, all English stuff, um, Phil Lynott, or who's, who's Irish, or, um, you know, like John Paul Jones, Geezer Butler, you know. Yeah. Uh, all, all those kind of, uh, John and Twistle, oh, Jack yeah. Bruce. Jack Bruce. Know, they, they, these are the first distortion bass players, you know, besides like the, Blue Cheer or something. How about that you know? dude, Peter Boltz or whatever from Accept? He was, he was, yeah, they came later for me. Yeah, I know, yeah. but I'm just saying that guy was, he was a cool metal player on bass to me. You know what I mean? But, he, he had some groove. Thing I didn't dig besides like Geddy Lee, yeah. uh, like metal, they had awesome Steve Harris and Steve Harris too. Besides Steve Harris and Geddy Lee, I thought a lot of the bass playing like in the 80s was kind of crappy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it was just straight, you know, which is cool. Yeah, just do, yeah. do, 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 yeah, do, which do, is, do, do, yeah. Which was great, but there wasn't like, it wasn't uh, special melodic bass going on, you know? Yeah, when you look at Geezer Butler, yeah. man, he's just all over, you know? He Boo, seems like to be a guy that wouldn't play the same thing twice either, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Steve Harris, I mean, he, he basically oh, yeah, laid it idols. down like, hey, you guys yeah. are all going to be going back to school and trying to learn yeah, this. I don't know if you ever met him. The nicest guy. Never met just him. Sweet. Just sweet. He's like just you. Comfortable in his own skin. Just like, you know, yeah, yeah. I play stadiums. And <laughs> my, my singer flies a fucking jet around, you know? Yeah, so yeah, fucking that's great. So you know, who does right? that? Yeah. Who does that? I mean, nobody, you know? It's amazing. Hey, can you imagine but, one of your band members flying the jet around? Yeah. You're like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, we're not. Like, like I said, we're only qualified qualified to do one thing <laughs> i love the um the unplugged show uh when you put up uh, friends don't let friends get their hair cut that's it's so amazing yeah, friends haircut yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's funny because like uh well and lane a, came out with short hair on that gig yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh it was it was a weird night we played some place in uh new york city you know and it was uh out in brooklyn yeah it's one of those crazy like you fly in and then new york city is a mind fuck already you know yeah and, then, uh, yeah, we, we, we pulled it off, man. We, we went up, up there, and, you know, I remember Jerry had eaten a street hot dog, so he wasn't feeling that good. He was puking, like, right up to be, before Whoa, we really? went on. Yeah. Holy shit. I remember him taking a trash can with him and up to the stage, and then he told his tech, here, put this next to where I'm sitting because I might have to puke, you know? Whoa, street dog. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, hold on a second. We could wait an hour, and we could get some doctor in here and give you some, like, you know, yeah. Pepto-Bismol or something. So I think he drank some, like, Pepto-Bismol, and, and we walked out, and we just did it, you know? And It's pretty haunting to watch Lane on that, man. It's yeah, a, he's it's, just such a good vocalist. And oh, man. I love when I, I had to pull up my eye top. away from him. Fucks yeah. up at the top, and then he's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and I love the realness of that, because then it's fucking on. It's almost like... Yeah, we had like, to get that out of our system. Out yeah, of it's almost yeah. like you got a soft touch from Muhammad Ali, and then he just punches the fuck out of you for the next hour. <laughs> Man, yeah. that shit is good, right? And then Scotty Olsen was on uh, uh, playing um, guitar with us. He's our bro from Seattle, you know? Yeah. And still to the, this day, we still like, even with Scotty, we go golfing all the time. And he was just living at Jerry's house when his, uh, his apartment building caught on fire. So Jerry's like, here, just go stay at my house in Seattle. So he put Scott, I mean, these relationships, yeah. I, I can't stress that the, the most. Like every, everybody down here in LA is fucking cutting each other's fucking throat for a fucking gig, man. Yeah. You know, and for like five bucks. Yeah, yeah right. I, I, I don't get this town sometimes, you know. Sex, I don't need a lot of unnecessary bullshit, you know. Yeah, it's like it's same with like in, in the in the in the rock and roll world and the comedy world and the actor world. It's like we should all be with each other 
and battle the fucking system, not each other. Yeah. That's how the business wants it. They want you to chew each other up so they can just keep making money when you're not yeah. looking, you know? You're distracted but, with other bullshit. You know? Yeah, if you're smart and just be yeah. like, nah, man, we're all bros. Fuck you. You owe us. Pay up, you yeah. know? And a lot of people see through that, though. And a lot of people see through it and don't act on it. But there's dudes like, you know, speaking of fallen heroes, Bill Hicks, yeah. fucking George Carlin, you know, yeah. they'll call some shit out, you know? Yeah. You do that, too. You call it out. I love, I love yeah. doing comedy, man. It's like, it's so... I think, for me, looking at you, I think you're the rock star because you're up there. We got all this shit, video screens and shit blowing up and yeah. all this stuff. We got a, a fucking road crew of 20 dudes. And yeah lightning rigs and digital this and fuck that and all this stuff right and then you walk up there one microphone one fucking spotlight and your wit that's it it yeah, was you fucking, tank you tank your tank and that's yeah, it it's it was on so you. fun man i remember yeah. the trump one there was just the guy in the back booing boo boo like just one guy right and then i was like oh you don't understand i have a microphone you don't and then yeah. i just lit him up man it was great. the power killer. of that yeah like you rookie why would yeah. you think I'm out on Alice in Chains? Why do you think I can't handle your one boo? You think I haven't seen that in my fucking 3,500 shows? The one drunk booer? Oh, I saw that yeah. in the seventh grade. Yeah, <laughs> in the boo. Do you get, that's that, all you do you got? get that here in LA? Never. Yeah, never. Here, here, even the, 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 the uh, uh, comedy crowd doesn't boo. Yeah, they're, that's they're, a rock and roll thing of old work. If you uh, look at the guy uh, that's booing, I said, I know, our, I can't even see you right now because Alice in Chains lights are so fucking radical when I was on. I go, I can't even see you right now, but I know what the fuck you look like. You haven't had a girl in 10 years. You got a giant fucking belly. You're probably wearing like dad <laughs> jeans that you bought at fucking Home Depot. Yeah, that you, must feel so good. See, I you, can't get away with that shit. Yeah, I'm yeah. too small. I'll yeah, just get yeah. beat up. <laughs> and, it's like, and you got a mullet, most definitely. And you think, you're, you definitely say there's no good music anymore. You're one of those guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know well, I mean? start a band, motherfucker. Let's yeah. see what you got. That's what I yeah, always yeah. say. Well, Motorhead boo, style, you know? Booing comes from the 70s where you booed the opener. That's what you did remember you'd go there wouldn't be an opener like i remember seeing van halen and the, the, the fucking uh no they had like the outlaws 38 special yeah then but i mean yeah. like this one time the rockets opened some band the rockets mm -hmm. and they were just boo throwing quarters at them and shit mm -hmm. yeah but you know um it, it's it's really hard but it is definitely rock and roll to me it feels more rock and roll than anything i've ever done you know it's wild you, you guys singing in a band? You gotta, tell no, me when you do your record. I'll come down and play some bass on it. I'm not singing in a band, but I, I, I was, boy. Just the do two, a comedy music The two record, weeks man. I was out with you guys, I was dying to sing one song. Because at Soundcheck, you guys, uh, you played, came, you you guys would play up. Lighting Up the Sky. You'd play Van Halen oh, 2 yeah, shit. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're no good. And I'm like, dude, I, that's my wheelhouse. Get me in there. You, oh, you should have came up, man. Anytime. Oh, I don't want to yeah. be like that. You know, we're gonna call you next time we play and you're in the same city. You're gonna do a song with us. I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to do fucking like. Didn't you jam with Jerry one time? I did. It was yeah. so funny. Here's a great story. <laughs> I came in audition. Jerry was doing a covers thing for a couple, like just gigs. A couple. I think it was charity gigs. And then uh, Billy Duffy hit me up and said, uh, "Hey, come down and try out for this thing." And I remember I went in. I did Hole in the Sky. Boy, and, that's high. And I killed it. I could do it. I'm looking through a hole in the sky. You know, da -na -na -na. Awesome. yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that and Bond killer. I can do killer Bond Scott. Yeah. So I kill that. And Jerry's like, well, that's fucking great. All right, let's do, um, let's do down in a hole. I go, okay, oh, that's cool. That's a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I never knew these guys are so great together laying in him that I can't tell which guy's singing which part. You know, like when I was like watching him ever. You can't go like, oh, Lane's this the high one or the low one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really used to flip back and forth. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Lane, so, Lane had this like ear for harmony. That, like he would pick, he wouldn't pick like just a third or a fifth. He would yeah. pick some like crazy fucking note, you know? And I even ask him, what the fuck is that? I don't fucking yeah. know. I'm just singing it. Shut the fuck up before I forget it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so we kick in, you know, and it's like, uh, what's the first verse? It's like, Fuck, I forget. Uh, uh, anyway, it, kick, it kicks in, you know, and I'm singing, and and uh, and Jerry looks over. He goes, "That's my note." 
I'm all, oh, oh, okay. Oh, like you're, you were supposed to know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't know. And he keeps playing. Yeah, we're like, down in a hole. No, no, we were doing Rain When I Die. Ah, that's, that's what a, it was. Yeah. That's a hard one to yeah. sing. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, is she willing to know my frustrations? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is that Jerry's? Yeah, I think that is Jerry's part, right? It's crazy, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's like oh, that's nice. my part. That's my part. And I was like, "Oh fuck! All right, all right." And then I, I try again, and, and my voice was just going to the other part. You know, that's huh. my range. And then he's like, "All right, cool, man." You know, and then never heard again. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I thought, well, "You got to redeem yourself." Next time we come through town, you I get up like, and do it. Damn, let me in there, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, man. It's like I don't play rock, and I tell people this all the time. If I could play with a band like Alice in Chains or something, hell yeah, I'll play rock for the rest of my life. But you got to have dudes that are fucking crushing, and they're it's in it yeah. for life, you know. And I'm yeah. in comedy for like life. There, there is nothing I hate worse than like uh like some of these jam night dudes yeah. around town like i'll go down and and you could tell the guy's just like a weekender guy you know that just does it on the weekends and it's like uh and then they try to big dog around oh. it's like get the oh. fuck out of here i just did a 40 country fucking fuck dude, you, dude. You know, I, you're, you're, that's you're, why i don't go yeah. to those jams i i was i went to them a couple times you know and yeah. these guys they're this are all, good, you know. Yeah, but, but they're, they're fighting over. You could tell who's who's real and who ain't real, though. For but they're sure. they're all walking mm. around like like it's some gig. It's like, dude, this is a, just a jam here. Who gives a fuck? Let the guy go play two, three. Like I'm next. You know I'm next. Yeah, it's like, god damn, tight. they're all fighting for a scrap on the ground. Yeah. You know, an old an old spotlight. And it's not like they're. Uh, yeah, and it's like it's not like they're these gigs pay anything. You Nothing. Know? It's just for showing up and jamming. And, yeah, man. Yeah. Like be cool. We're all here for free. But you got to respect the craft. Like you, yeah. you I, I bet you hate it when like a com- comedy guy goes up and doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. You're like, dude, put some time in, play some other clubs. Don't uh, try the comedy store right out of the gate. Oh well, you know? they try to fast track it. They'll come up to you and go, hey man, uh, uh, you know, you, you got any uh, tips on how to get somewhere? And it's like, yeah, yeah, just get on stage every day, open mics, right, and then uh, you know, do a podcast and also uh, maybe shoot some sketches and then get up uh, and travel. do it again the next day, yeah. travel, and, and then they. Look Look at you like well no i wanted your agent's number the, the, no yeah. there's like isn't there like a back door i can just go through and fuck all that you know what i mean you're you're like, like no dude, there's no fucking what fucking do you all think that. there's yeah. no shortcuts yeah same with rock and roll there's no mm. shortcut in i rock played and roll. every shithole in la everyone like even that cut the the day before i went to coconut Ireland, teaser coconut te- teaser in front of 10 fucking people and four of them were all our chicks yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah and the other three were probably three or four were probably waitresses yeah and, pay to play yeah. or all that shit man I remember there's this big fucking like beam in the middle of the stage, right? Where the singer would stand. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, remember that? That's right. Yeah. I forgot about so I that. Hitting, I mean, my bass keeps hitting this fucking pole. It's like, who the fuck puts a pole <laughs> the, in the middle of the, the stage? Worst stage yeah, ever. The worst stage ever. They used had, to have like that hamburger night, like Sunday or whatever. And, it was and like the shit on the floor. The, the, oh, yeah. Could, yeah. Uh, like, uh, like, like peanuts or something. Like fucking rat, like a rat cage. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah hamster cage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> What uh, you guys working on a new record? Uh, we are. We're going up to record. Uh, I think the trucks. We we loaded the truck up and it's on the way to Seattle right now. So we'll be going up in the next. Uh, the guys will start filtering in the next week or so. That's and pretty then, exciting. Now, yeah, uh, so. are all the tracks road, or are you going to ride in the studio, or what's going on? Yeah, we got a, a lot of stuff, and we're, we just got to get up there and get in a room, because uh, every album's so funny. You, you go, okay, this is a single. This is the, a song. This is the shit. Yeah. And then you go record it, and then at the end of the day, you're like, eh, I don't even know if that's good enough to be on the record. I thought it was, but yeah. you know, now that we recorded it, it just doesn't have that magic. But then another riff like that you just came up with that day or Jerry had from like 20 years ago, whatever, you know, it's like it, it pops up and then you jam on it. And then all of a sudden that one's like shines and, all, yeah. you, and you can never tell which one is going to shine and which one is. It's the same with comedy. Like you're, right. you're, you're doing bits and you're like, whoa, you really, they're laughing hard at this part. Like, I didn't even yeah. think this was going to be the funny part. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> Now, then you get cocky. Wait until I get to the funny part, and then you say the joke. Yeah, I'm gonna and really then, punch you in the face. And crickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh like, shit! Shit! <laughs> there goes my confidence. <laughs> William's killing it out there, huh? Oh yeah, he. We we're super blessed by Will. He, he. Um, I mean, just to stand up there. I mean, uh, God, those are some shoes that are. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. 
But, you know, the thing I respected about him is the first couple gigs, we were doing some club gigs, you know, and uh, he just went right to the front, put his foot on that monitor, yeah. and, like, stuck his chin out, right, and, like, fuck it, I'm, I'm the one standing here, fuck it, I'm going to yeah. just bring it as hard as I can. Um, and I saw I some was like, one I'm of those with that guy, shows. fuck yeah, man, let's do this together, you know, and then I go to the yeah. front, too, like, all right, me and you, man, let's fucking fuck some shit up. But he... um. I saw Sturgis, one of your early shows. Right, right, right. I was like, wow. Remember James Gang was on that uh, I don't weekend? I remember. Oh, yeah, man. those things are weird, cause, especially Sturgis, because yeah. you're 100 miles away from anywhere, and you just show up, you play, you get back on the bus, and you fuck off, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, Will was just like, it was. Uh, he had been playing with Jerry for a while, you know, and we were just real blessed to, to have him come on board. And, God, it's been 10 years, and, you know, we've done so many shows with Will. yeah. Maybe even more than we ever did with Lane at the time, you know? It's crazy. I had a but, great time out with you guys, man. Oh, yeah. Did you, you get to hang with Will a lot? or I did a yeah. little bit. I was yeah. mostly hanging with, uh, you know, like you or Jerry. You know, with Sean a lot. Sean's oh, great. Yeah. Sean is so fucking funny, man. Oh, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is. We still some, have a good time with each other. He's on some know? next level fucking clowning. He sm- he's yeah. came to see me a couple weeks ago at the oh, store. Man. He came down. He's like, oh, here. I love him. He's always got something fucking funny to say. Here comes Biker Boy. You know, all that kind of shit. Uh, <laughs> you know? yeah, he's sarcastic. He's a yeah, sarcastic I love him, man. He's oh, funny he's as fuck. Yeah. Great drummer, man. You guys got it going on, dude. Yeah, you know? So, so I think Will comes in soon, and we, uh, start, we'll start recording. And start. We, we, we were waiting for another band. Uh, who was it? Uh, it was some some old band that you're like wow they're still alive you know yeah uh, one of those bands but they're they're in the studio right now that we were wanting to go to so we, that we and they, we got pushed back like a week so we're on like a holding pattern to get in there and you're doing it in seattle yeah what this, studio this will be at studio x right which is the old bad animals that heart used to oh, own shit, and yeah. we did the dog record there so yeah. we're, we're going back to back home to do a record really you know wow. that's and uh you know we're like the last two were in la and they were cool and i just feel in 2017 it's time for allison chains to go back to seattle drink that water breathe yeah. that air yeah eat, that's great get into know. that who's producing yeah. uh same guy nick raskel in it oh sick so we'll go in and and uh yeah it'll be good I, I mean with heart and uh you know all my my heart family's up there so uh you know and, and that I, there's just such a history every street corner for us is like a memory and oh God. crazy shit happened there's some beautiful stuff and you know, it's just Seattle's a really special place. You know, especially this time of year, it's the best. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, man. It's 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 just got that crisp air. You know, yeah, and people are out now on it's the streets. Raining, so yeah. it's like a, it's people it's just are out. Water everywhere, and you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm loving be nice. up there, man. I'm going to Portland yeah. tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Yeah, nice. it's just gonna be great, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing it. I said, oh, you're you're a Rolex guy. Oh, this was a this was a, a gift. Uh, for for my fortieth birthday, I played at the Celebrity Theater in in Phoenix, um, and uh, Sean and Jerry and Susan Silver, our manager, yeah, they, they flew in secretly, and didn't tell anybody they came in, and uh, they gave me this watch for my fortieth birthday. They put they, they, it's all engraved on the back. Wow! And but that night was symbolic because that was my last Heart show. I, I ended up going back and filling in for Heart on the Cheap Trick Journey tour when right. their, um, their bass player had to go to a funeral, so I filled in some, some couple gigs you know yeah. a few gigs but um that was my last heart show on my 40th birthday and they secretly flew in how fucking yeah. cool and then is that after the show heart got on their bus with the new bass player and they went to the next thing and the next morning i woke up and then we flew straight to seattle and that is when we did the benefit uh with maynard from tool and all oh. these other guys and wilson yeah oh and came in for that too but we we went Straight into Alice in Chains. So it was sim- this watch to me is like symbolic. Wow. You know? So it's it was so like, cool. Yeah, it was like an ending of the heart chapter in back into the Alice in Chains chapter. And this is before we even had William in the band. Wow. So mm. when you got got Alice in Chains together, were you thinking of auditioning singers before William came in? Were you doing that? Uh, we were just thinking like, who do you get? Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, it basically came down to the, the, the bigger question was wasn't who we were going to get that that's the secondary question the main thing is like are, what are we to, like let's be clear 
are, what are we choosing here? Are we right. choosing to be together and go forward? And, you know, that was the big question for us, you know, because it started as a um, benefit for Sean put this benefit together for the tsunami victims. Right. right. And then, uh, so yeah, we got a bunch of money up for that and the different singers were coming in and jamming. Krista Garmo from Queensryche was sitting in and Duff. And I remember that. All these people coming. It was just a really good event in Seattle. So, you know, we had to ask ourselves like, what the fuck? Like, do, how, how do we do it? Yeah. You know, are we going to do it? That's the, that's the main question. Are we? And then after that is, what is it? Yep. You know, is this Alice? And then it's like, how do we go from this? So it was taking it step at a time and a lot of talks and brother to brother, heart to heart talks, you know? And, yeah. And then uh, we, we tried out only a few guys. And Who were they? Any famous guys? Uh, we had, I shouldn't say. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. I shouldn't say who yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, they came in and, you know, William William seemed to fit well. He, oh my he God, sang, he kills it. He, he sang, uh, I remember the moment was love hate love that's what he's saying yeah oh my god and he was nailing all this the high stuff and just with powerful the hardest song to sing i think because it's all dynamic to set up that haunting thing yeah and then it's the build vocal driven song oh man and he was the one that came in and said, uh, we're like, what do you want to do? And, uh, you know, it was that, like going back to my Aussie audition, you know, it's like, oh, crazy train. They're going, to, I don't know, you know. Yeah. He, he threw it out like, you know, we're, we thought he was going to do Rooster or something or Man in the Box, right? And he's yeah, like, yeah. no, I want to do Love, Hate, Love. We're like, fucking right, man. All right, get, get it. You know, yeah. let's do it, you know. And were you like blown away? Like, whoa. Oh, yeah, he kills it. Yeah. yeah. He's a great, he does great kill vocalist. And, yeah. But I've never seen a guy like, of all the singers and all the projects and shit I've done, the he prepares his voice he warms up warms down yeah he he uh he really takes care of his voice and he really takes it serious man the guy is like a killer he's yeah. he's a he's a stone cold killer and he he just wants to deliver the best fucking performance he can every fucking night you know yeah he does whether it's too. not talking in between shows or whatever he just i watched like, him every night and it he, was murder festival there was no yeah. like any kind of off nights it was like god this yeah, guy i watched every show serious yeah he's not out there to fuck around so i mean he he's he's bringing it every night you know awesome now and, and again, which kind of makes me go okay shit i gotta make sure my game's tight you know i can't yeah. be up there playing man in the box thinking about my fucking laundry or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> it's like no i'm in the moment i'm in the moment and i got yeah. Uh, you know, and he, he brings it. You guys yeah. go out and play golf every in the morning now, right? Jerry's all hooked on yeah, golf. Yeah, I, I don't go on show days. Yeah. yeah. It makes my hands sore. And yeah, yeah. It's just like too much, you know, especially when you're doing three, four in a row. Yeah. You know? But Jerry's a nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's into he goes, it. Yeah. Uh, but I'll go on every day off. I'll go with Jerry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so love it. With our addictive personalities, it gives us something to focus on, you know? Yeah. Now, real quick before you go, you auditioned for uh, Metallica back in the day, right? I, I never did. You no. never got in? No, no, no. That wasn't. Uh, we were, we were uh, off, off and running with Alex. I, 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 my, my path is a different path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Robert, who uh, took my spot in Ozzy, right? Yep. It, it, that was for him, man, all the way. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, yeah. I thought you did I, audition. I, I, I went to uh, Robert's audition with Ozzy and Sharon. Yeah. When, and I, I was like really pushing for Rob. It's like, no, you got to get Rob. It's got to be Rob. Yeah, Rob's yeah. a guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, so I'm glad it all worked out for Robert. And they they uh, are doing great. I, you know, I couldn't imagine them without him, you know. It's, yeah. It was the perfect fit. And he couldn't happen to a nicer dude. You know? I saw him Sunday. They killed it out there in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, nice. Just fucking yeah. smoking it, dude. The biggest shows I've ever played were opening up for Metallica. Like just gigantic gigs. I mean, yeah. the biggest gigs on Can the planet. Can you believe it, you know? dude? Just like... like I mean, how big it is. Oh, it's great. But then what happens, like, fast forward 10 years from now, Metallica calls it, Iron Maiden calls it. Yeah. Uh, Ramstein can't do those big shows, in, or they don't want to play. Yeah. Anyway. Like, who, who's, who's going to be? It? Right. Uh, who's it going to be? It's got to be those festivals, you know. And just that's all it's going to be. A bunch of people, yeah. But yeah, I remember a guy I told mean, you me. You will go away. Yeah, you too. Paul McCartney, Springsteen. Rolling Stone, Springsteen. All the arena bands will be gone. Yeah, I mean, it's not set up to. Yeah, the industry. The one, you know? That's the industry's fault too. By chopping people down, like, oh, the hair metal's over. Oh, grunge is out now. Oh, yeah. this is out. Instead of just going, yeah, they just keep playing. You know what I mean? They chop things down to, to sell the, this is the new candy. 
And then, right. well, you forgot, man, you got to fucking groom these bands so they can play in the industry for 20, 30 years. But they don't look at it. They look yeah, at it like fund it and support get, the band. Yeah, they look at it like mm. get the money now. Next, next. Yeah. They're, they're going looking. for everything. Now, these record companies are hilarious, man. They're yeah. like, OK, I want your publishing. I want your T-shirt money. Yeah. And we're going to give you this amount. Deals. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's like, it's like, wait a minute. You weren't you weren't there when we were playing clubs and all this. So fuck yeah. you. You know, yeah. it's like you guys put yeah. your own records out or you on a label. Uh, the last two were on um, Capital, yep. Universal. Whoa, Capital. Yeah, That's I think dope. it was Capital, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just know we went to a lot of meetings at the Capital building, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was yeah, Universal. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then, uh, so this one, we're not sure where it's going to land. We want to partner with somebody, and um, we'll yeah. see where it goes. It was only a two-album deal with those guys. Oh, cool. So, but we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. But, we, I mean, we financed the, the first one back on our own, too, you know. So we're, yeah. we're not too worried about that stuff, you know. Get, we we just got to get it out to a it's like Alice is a global band you know so it has to be a yeah. significant label that has infrastructure where we could get this stuff in stores in like fucking Singapore when we play or South America wherever you know so yeah that's fun to play over there right uh yeah it's cool yeah yeah I remember uh yeah there's I could tell you that's a whole different podcast dude I'll tell you some crazy road stories <laughs> yeah yeah hell yeah. I love that stuff, man. When you're, uh, you, it's so weird to think about like you or I or like rock and roll guys. Rock and roll has taken us around the planet. You know what I mean? Oh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, right. Oh, man, I, I get home and I just get bored. And if I not if I don't keep moving, I I start getting a little antsy. My wife's like, hey, don't you got a tour to do? Get out of here. You're getting a little <laughs> tight, you know? <laughs> so Yeah, man. But hey, tour time. She starts booking the tour for you. Yeah, yeah. That's but awesome, I man. I just love playing, man. I, st I just wouldn't have it any other way, you know? You still play those Spectre basses? Uh, I got one Spectre. I'm a Warwick guy, so they look yeah. kind of like the Spectre. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So they're German company. Yeah, I've been yeah. playing them since 89 or 90. and I, I got tons of Fenders and all, all kinds of different ones, you know? And uh, yeah, just I don't know, same old shit. And then know? what's your bass rig? Ampeg, SPT. Ampeg, yeah, yeah. Sick. I, I I got a bunch of uh, old like 1969, 71. I bought off the Van Halen camp. Oh really? really? Cool. Yeah. That's what you're so, touring with? Yeah. And, then and, I, and, and it then, doesn't break down? Uh, if they do, I rotate them. I got a whole bunch of them, oh, so cool. I rotate them. And I got a great tech that like keeps them all tight. Wow. And then I got some new Ampeg stuff and. You know, for the 18s, I'd sub out some stuff, and then I got like that. But my main tones, like a 1969 uh, Ampeg heads, are my favorite. You know. Wow. So what's that? Fifty? I don't know how many years? Yeah. Sixty nine. Wow, what, that's that? sick. Forty eight. I'm I'm playing 48 year old amps. You know. I can't believe they haven't caught fire. Those Ampegs always caught fire. Yeah, back I've been lucky. Yeah. I, my I, boy Joey DeBono's right amp would just be on fire mid gig. <laughs> yeah. Like what the fuck? Yeah, that's not good to breathe that stuff in either. You know? <laughs> Giving you a brain just tumor. Up and solder. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I've been lucky. I don't know. Yeah, that's great, yeah. man. Well, fuck. Yeah. Thank you, dude. And uh, Dean, I'm my, my to, brother. I'm looking forward to hearing the new record, man. I can't wait. Man. Oh, well, I am looking forward to you sitting in with the band one of these days. Oh man, show. I, I want yeah, to do that more than you th you know, dude. Okay, cool. I was like, a, I was over there like a crack addict while you guys would be sound checking. Oh, you know, I'd anytime. Be like, oh, I gotta get up there, man. I gotta get up there and just pop, power through one. You know what I mean? Oh, not even a sound check. You got to do a gig with us. Oh, I yeah, would do come that. Come out, do in man a in the box or something. You know? Oh man, in the yeah. box is my jam. That's a hard actually, one too. Actually, I would do. Hold on. I'll tell you what I would want to do. I would want to do, uh, oh, like a crazy one, like Head Creeps. Wow. Oh, nice. Wow. We haven't played that in forever. That kind yeah. of shit, man. Forgot you know? about that one. Mm. Yeah. that's Or, or, or one of the uh, acoustic tunes, you know, that's, that's, that's cool, man. It's, I'm going to hold you to it. Oh, I'm, I'm on it. To it. I'm on it. And then uh, shout at me, dude, and come see some comedy. Oh, know? for sure. No, we're hanging out. I'm in your life, man. Yeah, I love it, dude. Uh, all right. You got an Instagram or Twitter or anything? Or is it just uh, a band? Nah, just a band. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then. Yeah, social media just makes me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much shit to deal with all the time. I don't yeah, know. it's like, yeah. you got the best. You got, you, 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 <laughs> dude, you don't know how lucky you are not to have to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. It's, I mean, you do the interviews and stuff and you try to make it substantive, but like for the most part, I'm like shitty at selling stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I give the farm away. It's just like, you know, I just, I, I, I feel slimy if I start like feeling like I have to sell some shit on Instagram or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like yeah. I don't know. 
I just put photos me. up, you know, of like, mm. like I put some great photos up when we were on that tour together. It was great, man. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. It's fun stuff. I love oh. photos. I love rock photos. Like rock photography is so great, you know? Yeah, that's kind of a dead art too. There's it not is. that many like rock guys that are making a living doing it anymore. When you look at a photo yeah. like, you know, let's say you look at a photo of like Jimmy Page at the LA Forum in 77. Black and go, white. Yeah, yeah, you just go, look at that fucking... Look at that dragon pants. Look at that yeah. last pole. And like selling it. But you know, like. Just fucking killing it with yeah. the fucking, you know, with those crazy <laughs> weird penny loafers he's wearing. They're like, look at that. Like you at know? the forum club, walking into the forum club. Love that, guys. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that's my that one God. Is. That's got a history. It makes your arm hairs go up. You're like, these guys were here. Yeah. Who's, who's your favorite band of all time? Ooh. Like, you know, like. Maybe. Are, Beatles, Zeppelin, something like that. Beatles, know. Zeppelin. Probably Zeppelin was Zeppelin combined the heavy, yeah, with the dis- and the distortion. And you listen to uh, anything new? Oh, I like a lot. I like a lot of new stuff. I like a lot of heavy shit. Like yeah. there's this band from Buffalo, New York called Every Time I Die. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. love Every Time I Die. I just yeah. think they're smart and it's heavy. I like heavy. I'm the guy in the band that listens to the heaviest shit. How about Gorgira? Yeah. You hear them? Love Gorgira. Oh cool, man. Uh, I love King. Oh you yeah. Know. And uh, you get into like uh, rival sons or any of that kind of the, yeah. the rock going on. Yeah. How about all them witches? You like the stoner rock stuff? I love that. Like all them witches. One, one of my favorites is uh, Monster Truck from Canada. Oh, yeah, I know yeah, them. They Monster opened up Truck. Where, yeah, and I'd sit in with them every night. We'd play this song called Swarted Beast. It's their heaviest song. And I'd sneak up on stage and play it and warm up for our set. You know, That's so, sick. You know, so Monster Truck's one of my favorite bands. They're great. They'll How about them. Earthless? And the, You heard I them? I don't know. Earthless. Or, so many uh, great bands, man, you know, out there like. Uh, Oh, heavy shit out there right now. It's great. Yeah, and everybody's talking about rock is dead. It's like, yeah, wow, fucking you ain't crazy. Going to the right gigs. I can't even yeah. keep up. Right. There's so much great yeah. shit right now. Especially in Europe. There's this flourish. It's flourishing in Europe, you know? Yeah, yeah. Europe Europe doesn't give up on bands, though, too. That's what I love about yeah. them. They're not like, I mean, Status Quo was still playing, you know, right? 40 years later. Yeah. No one would even know who they are here. That's how oh, yeah. great European fans are. Like, I like the 15th record. You're like the 15th <laughs> yeah, record. Yeah, Jesus. UFO, <laughs> when they had the ninth singer. But, you yeah, know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah. You know? Oh, like, Strangers of the Night, though. Oh, the, come on. The dude. best live album, probably. Come on. Yeah. Strangers. Dude, that- I could talk to you for t- 20 hours about this shit. <laughs> All, right, <I> love- <laughs> All right, guys. There we go, man. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, keep, uh, keep uh, you know, write a review and subscribe to the podcast. Thank you, guys. Candles lit. <laughs>